Hello and welcome back to my channel, Quirky What If. Join us as we delve into the realms of fanfiction and fantasy, bringing you the best stories and discussions. Today, we're kicking off the second part of our series, What If Deku Started Petty Crimes? If you enjoy this video, please give it a like and subscribe for more content in the future. The author of this story is Lauren Zodge 10 from fanfiction.net. All the relevant links are in the description. Feel free to say hello to the author on their profile. Now, let's dive into the fanfic. Chapter 8 Quirks and Particles Izuku met up with his friends at the Ant Hill. He had dusted off a table in one of the garages and put the computer on it. He spent the rest of the day on the computer going through its files. Soon all of his friends were in the garage asking him if he was alright. I'm sorry guys, it's just I have no idea what just happened. Why was that guy getting torn apart when he was shrunken down? I've shrunken down several people and nothing like this happened to them. What exactly happened? Asked Sarah. I shrunk him down trying to stop him from exploding a city block but when I shrunk him down it was as if his quirk was tearing him apart. Explain Izuku. Maybe it was, said Hannah as she sat down on a tool bench. I've seen several idiots at the school and around town blow themselves up because they were stupid with their quirk. That would make sense, said Benta. Think about it, maybe his body couldn't contain all that power at such a small size. Izuku thought it over, yeah I guess that Mac. Thud. They all turned to Kenta's car. Kenta, what's in your trunk? Kenta's face turned to shock as he remembered. Oh shit the guy. The guy, what guy? Oh yeah, we kind of forgot about him. Chimed Genta. Izuku gave them a look of disbelief before turning to Benta. What? Benta took a deep breath. Remember that guy you asked us to get? The man talking to Time Bomb. Time Bomb? Yelp Sarah. A guy who worked for the sex slavers. Yeah that guy, said Kenta. We grabbed his friend and kind of forgot he was in the trunk of my car. Izuku's eyes couldn't go any wider as he looked at the three, not fully believing what they just told him. Hannah on the other burst out laughing her ass off. She clenched her stomach as she fell off the tool bench. Thud. Izuku looked at the car as it became clear the guy was trying to get out of the car. Actually this works in our favor. As he grabbed his suit and told him his plan. Soon the trunk of the car opened. Finally, said playback as he fell out of the trunk, landing on the ground with a thud. He groaned before looking up face to face with a giant ant. HHH. Shut up, yelled Ant-Man. Stop screaming, we need to talk. Playback got to his feet and noticed he was surrounded by a bunch of giant ants before he refocused on Ant-Man. Look man, I'm sorry okay, they hired me to do a simple job, man. I couldn't even do it. Explain. Your quirk. It messed with my quirk. I couldn't track you. Track me. Who are you? Asked Ant-Man but noticed he was hesitating. Please don't make me threaten you. Playback gulped. They call me Playback. Cause my quirk allows me to see where people have been. Time Bomb hired me to track you down but I couldn't. Whatever your quirk is, it messes with mine and other people's quirks. I couldn't track you and Time Bomb's people are not people you want to fuck with? Okay. I have zero combat ability. Izuku thought for a moment. Time Bomb didn't seem like the guy who wants revenge. No, he's a henchman. He's working for someone and he has people working for him. Who else is working for Time Bomb? Asked Ant-Man. I don't know exactly. The ant stepped forward. I'm being honest. He has several people and I only saw four of them. I never got any names but with the bounty on your head he should have a lot more. Bounty? Yeah, he pissed off a good chunk of the criminal underworld and I'm not just talking about Japan. I don't know how they did it but several crime syndicates used this area for dealing, local and international. They had some sort of system to keep this place quiet until you came along. They are pissed and a lot of them ain't going to rest until you are in a grave. Shit. This is bad. I always knew there were worse things here but if the shithole I've been living in this whole time is a cover up, then what the hell is underneath all the shit? Um look man, I promise I won't try and track you down again, can you please just let me go? Asked Playback hoping the vigilante would just let him go. Don't worry, I'm not going to kill you. But Izuku then threw a shrinking disc at Playback, turning him tiny. You aren't going anywhere yet. As Izuku shrunk himself enough to grab Playback and put him in a jar covered in magazine clippings so that he couldn't see out of it. Izuku then grew back to his regular height as his friends came out of hiding. So what are you going to do with him? Asked Sarah. Izuku sighed as he put the jar down on the table. I'm going to have to talk to Turk to let me borrow his memory wiping guy. He then looked to see his friends' faces. What? Turk. As in the Turk. Said Kenta in a very loud voice. Izuku looked away and scratched his head. Yeah, I may have done a few jobs for him a few years ago. I thought you said don't do anything too illegal, said Genta. Those were not my words and second, this was years ago, back when me and my mom were still knee-deep in debt. Explained Izuku. Besides he owes me a favor as long as he doesn't figure out it was me who hacked his computer. Why the hell did you hack his computer? Asked Benta. He's probably killed for less. He has and I needed the locations for traffickers' warehouses. As Izuku started taking the suit off, leaving him in his t-shirt and shorts. Besides that, we have other things to worry about. As he held the suit. This suit has given me the opportunity that I only dreamt of when I was a little kid, but now it's gotten me a bounty on my head from the underworld. I don't care what they throw at me but it's going to put the rest of you guys in dang. Izuku didn't finish as Kenta slammed his fist on Izuku's head. Shut up. Yelled Kenta as Izuku rubbed his new bump on his head. If you even think about giving us a speech about us having to run away, think again, bro. 
You've stuck with me when we were caught by the cops and even got me out. I ain't leaving you hanging and I doubt anyone else here is leaving. Yeah, you've always been a good bet, Janta said simply. Benta nodded. I'm pretty sure I would have been killed if it wasn't for you. That would have been me if you didn't come to my rescue. If there's anything you need help with just say the word. Sarah offered. Yeah, we're with you, stated Hannah. Izuku couldn't help but look at his friends with a warm feeling in his chest. I don't know who's crazier me or you guys wanting to stay near me. He then glanced at the suit. But it still might be dangerous being too close to me. I still don't know the full effects of pin particles on a person. Are you in any danger? Asked Sarah. I don't think so. I've been using the particles for nearly three weeks and nothing has happened to me. What about that Hank guy? Asked Hannah. Did anything happen to him? No, I don't think so. All of his and Lang's notes say that their experiments they conducted were all successful. As Izuku went back to the computer and looked at the notes. And the notes were made years apart. Kenta looked over Izuku's shoulder, not really making heads or tails of the English. Well, maybe they had the same quirk as you. Izuku got annoyed at that. For the last time Kenta on quirk dot dot less dot 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 Izuku's eyes widened as he realized something. That's it. As Kenta puffed out his chest. See, I can come up with science stuff. As he received looks from the others. Izuku quickly returned to the computer and started typing away until he found what he was looking for, he then turned to Kenta. Kenta, how would you like to try on the suit? Really? As he gave Izuku a goofy grin. Izuku handed him the Ant-Man suit. Hell yeah. Is this really a good idea? Asked Genta. Hannah nodded in agreement. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about Kenta wearing that suit. Just watch, said Izuku as Kenta put on the suit. Oh wow, this is a lot more comfortable than I thought, said Kenta, feeling the suit. Yeah, it changes size depending on the wearer. As Izuku stepped forward checking the suit. Okay, how are you feeling? I feel good, said Kenta before Izuku asked him to shrink. Okay, here I go. As Kenta hit the button but nothing happened, he pressed it again, nothing. Well, I think I broke it. No you didn't, said Izuku before he told Kenta to take it off and switch with him. As Izuku put the suit on he switched out the pin particles with fresh ones. Okay, let's try this now. As he hit the button and shrunk down. What? Shouted Kenta as he saw Izuku shrink. How come it worked for you and not me? Cause you have a quirk, said Benta. That's the whole reason the radiation dude had problems in the first place. Those particles don't work for people with quirks. Not exactly, said Izuku regrowing. Do any of you guys know where we can find three plants that I can use? Sarah raised her hand. Right here. Each room of the motel had a small potted plant near the window. Some of them were dead but I think a few should still be alive. Great, can you go and get them for me, please and thank you. As the sisters went to get the potted plants Izuku asked the others to help him set up some equipment. Soon the sisters brought back three potted plants and Izuku printed two new shrinking discs. Okay this should explain what's going on. While the suit doesn't have a proper screen, it does have a computer in it. Also note to self hid screen or HUD to the suit and helmet. The computer will only activate the particles if it deems it safe. It also records the biometric data of whoever is wearing it. Izuku then held up the two discs each in one hand. The one in my left hand is made with my data and the particles I used, the one on my right is Kentis. Izuku threw the one in his left hand, shrinking one of the potted plants, they all moved closer to see it really did shrink down. Now let's try Kentis. As Izuku threw the right disc at the potted plant, they all backed away in horror as they saw the plant turn into a tiny ball of slug falling to the ground. What the fuck? Shouted Genta. Sarah's face twisted in disgust. Okay that's gross. Hannah leaned forward. It's like it melted. Could that have been Kenta if he shrunk down? Asked Benta causing Kenta freeze in horror at the idea of turning into a big ball of goo. If it wasn't for the suit's safety features then yeah, this might have been Kenta. Said Izuku causing Kenta to turn green ready to throw up. Lucky Dr. Pym was prepared. This is also why no one was able to replicate his work. Izuku grabbed a third disc from his bag and threw it at the third plant, shrinking it just like the first one. He was quirkless, just like me. Wait, I'm confused here, said Sarah. You've used those discs to shrink people before, why didn't they turn to slug? Because they were based on my biometric. The discs don't have a computer or safety features. To make sure the discs work right and shrink everything evenly, they need a biometric base. Hugh, said Benta as he thought over the information. Then that means there is something that we as quirked people have that does something to the particles. Quirk factor, Hizuku said simply. Quirk factor, sighed Kenda confused. Jenna shook his head. Okay, you're going to need to explain it like we stupid. It's pretty much a theory that we just confirmed. As Izuku thought of a way to explain it. In all of you is something that allows you to have a quirk, but no one had any idea what it was because of how small it was and how different it was in every person. Pim particles shrink the space between atoms. Think of your bodies as a container and your quirk as a liquid. The pim particles shrink the container which may cause the liquid inside to change. The others were silent for a moment. Oh I get it, said Kenta. Jenna looked at him. No you don't. No I don't. I think I do, said Benta. So when you used the disc on the radiation guy, he shrunk down and since his container changed so did his quirk, he lost his immunity to his quirk when he shrunk down. Yeah, he did scream and yell that his quirk was hurting him, said Izuku. His quirk was powerful but only because he was immune to it. The second he lost it he was torn up inside. Then what about us? Asked Sarah what would happen if we shrink down. Izuku looked at her. I don't know and I'm not sure how to test it. 
Well, just shrink me down. Izuku gave her a look that said, are you crazy? Did you not see what happened to the plant? We have no idea what could happen to you. Hannah stepped forward. Well, we won't know unless we find out and our quirk is literally us changing our hair color. What could possibly happen if we shrink down, our skin changes color? Izuku thought it over for a moment, before reluctantly agreeing to shrink the two. Okay, fine. But the second something goes wrong, I'm growing you two back to regular size. He then turned to the guys. Do you guys also want to shrink? Kenta turned to the tiny slug on the floor. I think I'm good for now. Yeah, we'll stay tall to make sure things go all right, said Genta. Would you like me to monitor the computer or write notes? Asked Benta. He and Izuku quickly set up the camera and formed a quick testing zone. Okay, you two ready? Asked Izuku. Yep, said Sarah. Let's shrink, said Hannah. Izuku took two discs and shrunk the two down to the size of the ants. They both were in awe as they looked at their surroundings. Whoa, everything is huge. Sarah looked around at the garage. So this is what it's like for you. As Sarah was looking around, she noticed something. Hannah, can you check my hair for a second? Oh, uh, sure, as Hannah looked at her sister's hair. It looks wow. What's wrong? Asked Izuku on alert. Her hair, it's longer. What? My scalp does feel a little weird, said Sarah before her hair started to get longer and longer. Hannah quickly had to grab her sister's flowing hair. Wait, stop, stop. The hair stopped leaving Sarah with several feet of hair around her. Sis, are you okay? Asked Hannah. Yeah, I'm fine, said Sarah as she tried to move with her new long hair. I'm not in any pain but my head does feel weird. Did anything else happen at all? Asked Izuku. Like hair growing on other places on your body. Sarah patted herself. No, I think it's just my head. Can you still change the color of your hair? Asked Hannah. Sarah focused and her hair changed to a shiny gold. Yeah, I still can but did my hair get heavier? Wow, said Kenta as he looked closer. She looks like that long hair princess girl. Rapunzel, corrected Benta. Yeah, but she is tiny like Tinkerbell, said Genta. She could be like a cousin or sister. That's Periwinkle, said Benta before everyone slowly turned to him. Periwinkle, Tinkerbell's twin sister. They all just kept looking at him. My mom only has Disney movies, that's all I watched as a kid, stop judging me. Izuku held Sarah's hair in his hand. Sarah, I think you literally turned your hair into gold. What? They all yelled. I wish I had a knife or something to before Izuku could finish Sarah's hair fell off, leaving the girl hair down to knees. Huh, Sarah, how do you do that? Asked Hannah. I just imagined my hair shortening to my legs, I thought I could try and retract it, but instead it just disconnected. She guessed. Izuku, said Genta. Can I see some of that golden hair? Izuku grew a strand for him to check. Hannah dropped the hair she was holding and grabbed a bit of Sarah's hair. Can you try and disconnect the hair I'm holding? Sarah focused and her hair cut itself, leaving Hannah holding a clump of Sarah. Whoa. Sarah turned her hair to black, seemingly to normal hair. How about you can you do anything with your hair? Hannah focused slowly turning her hair red. I don't think my hair's doing anything. Before anything else the top of Hannah's head caught fire. H-H-H. She screamed before she started running. My hair's on fire, get it off, get it off. Hold still, I'll grow you back. Yelled Izuku running towards her, before he reached her the fiery hair fell off her head. Kenda grabbed a water bottle he had in his car and put out the glup of hair. You guys okay, down there. Izuku looked to see the hair was out and Sarah was checking Hannah. Yeah I think so. Hannah well, well, yelled Sarah. My hair. Sarah was left with very short hair on her head, causing tears well up in her eyes. Izuku can you fix it? Just relax for a second, are you in any pain or burnt anywhere? Asked Izuku. I don't know, muttered Hannah. Sarah checked her sister's scalp. No, she doesn't have any burn marks or anything, I don't think the fire hurt her at all. This news relieved Izuku and Sarah. Hannah, breathe and focus, think of your hair growing to the middle of your back, okay. Okay, I'll try. Hannah closed her eyes and breathed. Her hair slowly began to grow until it reached her back. I did, my hair's back. Izuku blew a sigh of relief. This could have been bad. Before he looked up at Genta. So what's the verdict? Genta held up the hair. This is 100% real gold. Wow, muttered Sarah. Looks like there's more to our quirk than we first thought, said Hannah as she wiped the tears from her eyes. I think this has something to do more with the particles, right? As she turned to Izuku. Yeah, it's official. Tim particles can alter people's quirks, said Izuku before regrowing the three. This is going to take a lot more research than I thought. Well, how about we put that aside for later, suggested Kenta. Cause we still got other stuff we should be doing around here. Yeah, we need to clean this place up and figure out what we're going to do with it, said Genta. I have a few ideas, said Benta. But we should probably clean this place up first. Yeah, but first, Izuku took out his phone. I need to give Turk a quick phone call. Oh, in the back of prison transport sat two villains in chains with guns pointed at them. Flame Elephant and Radvolt. What the fuck happened to your face? Radvolt glared at Flame Elephant. The result of shrinking left lightning burn marks on his face and body. Ant-Man, shut up, both of you, said the officer. No talking until we get to Tartarus. I'm afraid I need a word from them. The officer went on alert as they looked around for the new voice. Who's there? Me. They all looked down on the floor to see a shadow holding two guns before it pulled the trigger, killing the police officers. The transport screeched to a halt before gunshots and screaming were heard. The shadow man pulled himself off the floor and opened the doors revealing Time Bomb. 
He looked at Radvolt, you look like shit, and then turned to Flame Elephant. You just look like crap. Radvolt ignored the comments. Hurry up and get me out of here, he hissed. I need to find Ant-Man and rip his throat out. No, release me, yelled Flame Elephant. I need to crush that bug. Time Bomb took out a roll of tape and put a few pieces on the restraints of both of them. I don't care which one of you does it, I just need him dead. The pieces of tape exploded, destroying the restraints. Now hurry up before the heroes get here. The two walked out of the transport to see several bodies of police officers on the floor and a patrol car turned over. Oh look, the loser has a friend. They turned to see the man in a unitard step on the corpse of an officer. Why are we rescuing the failure? Radvolt looked at the man ready to kill but stopped when Time Bomb stepped between them. He's powerful and his fight with Ant-Man may give us some useful intel. Who is this man? Asked Flame Elephant. The man in the unitard smiled before quickly kicking his leg causing a massive slice on Flame Elephant's stomach. I'm Sir Dazzle, and you will show me respect, you brute. Flame Elephant burned as he looked at Dazzle. You will regret that puny man. Before they could clash a knife landed between them. Knock it off, said the woman in the military get up. The heroes are coming, it's time to move. They all quickly ran away from the scene as they did. Time Boom got a call on his phone. Hello, Lady Akka. What happened? I thought you had a person who could track Ant-Man. She said over the phone. I'm sorry ma'am I didn't talk to you sooner but fighting Ant-Man might be more difficult than we originally thought. As he went on to explain what happened over the day. I just got done getting Radvolt back and we're currently moving away from the scene. So that's why, Foresight wasn't able to track him. Foresight? Oh it's Foresight. He asked hoping he didn't cross a line. Lady Akka hummed for a moment on the phone. I'm sending you a location. I want you to go there and wait for further instructions and make sure Radvolt is with you. I have a few friends that would like to hear this. Oh, Izuku slowly made his way home after a long day on top of dropping playback with Turk's man. Man we did a lot today, thought Izuku. Found a new base of operations, fought a villain and discovered that only a quirkless person could operate the suit. That made him chuckle slightly as he entered his apartment. It's nice to think that only someone like me can have this power, like my quirk. It looks like you had a good day today, said Inko who was sitting on the couch. Oh hey mom, Izuku looked at the clock. You're home early today. Inko gave him a look. What? Izuku we talked about this, do you remember where we are going tomorrow? She asked, receiving a blank look before signing. Izuku, I know things have been crazy the past few weeks but we agreed to go see Mitsuki tomorrow. Oh right, said Izuku. Katsuki got attacked. That's right, I'm sorry mom, I totally forgot. It's alright, a lot has happened. Izuku then remembered just how much had happened. It's been crazy. No kidding, you looking forward to seeing Katsuki again. Sure, I wonder if he's changed at all. Chapter 9 Foresight The first thing he heard was a knocking on his door. He tried to ignore it but it continued, Knock it off you fucking hag, I'm sleeping her. Yelled Katsuki Bakuo. His mother Mitsuki opened the door. What the hell are you doing? She asked as she opened his blinds. The sun has been up for hours. Get your ass out of bed, we have guests. Katsuki moved to sit up with his left leg still in a cast and his right forearm was still in bandage wrap three weeks before he was caught and held hostage by a slime villain. He was able to escape by blowing himself up but that just pissed the villain off. The villain then threw the boy against a wall breaking several bones. It was only thanks to his unnatural stubbornness and thick-headedness that made his recovery quicker than most. Are you fucking blind? I'm still recovering dot 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 wait what did you say? We have guests downstairs. Inko and Izuku, the Midori as I'm sure you remember them. Katsuki blinked for a moment, as he tried to match the names to faces as an old memory of a little boy sticking his hand out to him when he fell into a small stream. Deku, that crybaby is here. That crybaby came here to check up on you, so be on your best behavior, said Mitsuki as she turned to the door. And clean yourself up I haven't seen my friend in years and I don't want her to think my son is some sort of barbarian. Katsuki clicked his tongue, damn hag, as he got dressed the best he could. As he made his way downstairs he wondered what Deku had been doing over the years. That idiot most likely became some sort of spinless nerd. I can already see people at his school making fun of him and stealing his money. Hell I'd bet his neighbors probably give him hell. When Katsuki made it to the kitchen he saw Inko and Izuku sitting at the table drinking coffee his mom had made. Hello there Katsuki, it's been a long time, said Inko. Yo, said Izuku before taking a sip of his coffee. Aside from the injuries how have you been? Katsuki took a seat as his mom placed a mug of coffee in front of him. He took a sip while he looked at the two. Something is not right here. They both have a strange look in their eyes as if they're totally different people. Especially Deku. He looks like he's been working out tougher. Oh don't tell me the damn nerd is still trying to be a hero. He then noticed both were giving him looks. I'm doing just fine, Deku. Deku. Izuku blinked in confusion. I haven't heard that nickname in forever. Deku. I never knew Katsuki gave you a nickname, said Inko. Did you have one for him? I used to call him Kachin, remember? Oh wow I remember that, said Mitsuki. You used to come by here asking if Kachin was here. Inko chuckled. They were so adorable back then. Shut up both of you. Yelled Katsuki not liking the idea of being called adorable. I'm going to UA in a few months and I don't want that sticking with me when I become a hero. 
Izuku glanced at Katsuki. Oh, still trying to become hero? Huh. Of course I am, announced Katsuki. I'm going to be the number one hero. Hell, I'll be an even greater hero than All Might. So don't you even think for a second you can become a hero greater than me. Izuku put his coffee down and gave Katsuki a confused look. Hinko then spoke up. Katsuki, Izuku isn't going to a hero school, he's skipping high school altogether and going into college. What? said the Bakugos. You're going to college? asked Mitsuki. Well I don't want to jinx it but most likely, I've gotten the green light from Mustafar University's dean to take the entrance exam. How? asked Katsuki through clenched teeth. I did a few trial exams online and got good scores, not to mention I got a recommendation from my school and a few others, said Izuku as he drank his coffee, not to mention having the dean as an old client helps out a ton. He and the other board of the school were more than happy to help out the psychic of the ghost two years ago, the school had a problem with a few teachers, so Izuku was hired to find dirt on them so they could remove the teachers quietly without any issues getting out to the public. So all I got to do now is repeat my success with the practice tests and I'll be going straight to college. Oh wow, what will you be studying? Asked Mitsuki. Hero support, I want to help build gadgets for our people on the front lines, said Izuku. Wow, isn't that nice Katsuki? Maybe you can try out one of Izuku's gadgets. Shut up. As Katsuki slammed his hand on the table knocking his coffee over. Do you think you're better than me? K-A-T-S-U-K-I. Yelled his mom. I'm the one born to be a hero, you're just a quirkless freak. Please settle down now, young man, said Inko in a calm but firm tone. There's no need to raise your voice. You shut up. I don't need to listen to shit from a old hag like you, I'll all kill you. The next thing that happened shocked the Bakugos. In a blink of an eye Izuku moved smashing his coffee mug, shattering it against Katsuki's head. As Katsuki landed on the ground Izuku grabbed the biggest shard and got on top of Katsuki putting the shard against Katsuki's ear. Now listen here you piece of shit, I can cut your ear off faster than you can fire off an explosion. You don't talk to my mother that way and you sure as hell don't threaten her. Katsuki didn't yell or feel pain as he looked up at the person holding him down. Who is this? Where the hell did Deku go? This isn't Deku, is it? Katsuki's mind was stuttering as the image of the boy he used to beat up for fun was now holding him down to the ground with a shard next to his ear, a threat he was willing to cut him. What the hell is going on? Mitsuki was watching in horror as her friend's son was holding her son down. Inko. Inko turned to Mitsuki giving her a look that sent a chill down her spine. She was calm, collected, giving Mitsuki a look that said she was unperturbed by the situation. Inko. Inko tilted her head slightly. Oh right, Izuku. Izuku turned his head slightly to his mother. Remember to clean up the shards when you're done. Okay, was all Izuku said before turning back to Katsuki and seeing that he got the message. You behave, was all he said to the boy before he started picking up pieces of the mug. Mitsuki just stared at Inko who calmly drank the rest of her coffee. What the fuck? Um, is something wrong Mitsuki? Asked Inko. Is something wrong? Your son just hit Katsuki with a mug and dot dot and dot 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 your dot 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 you're not reacting at all. What the hell have you up to for these last few years? And Ko thought it over for a moment. I guess I have just gotten used to this sort of thing. Usually though it's Mr. Ramen who throws out the troublemakers but ever now and then I and Izuku need to step up. Mr. Ramen. My boss, I work at the ramen shop in the trash pit. Trash pit. Mitsuki was confused for a moment before she remembered the news. Wait you don't mean the Gamabako district, the place that's all over the news. That's the one. Katsuki slowly picked himself up and stared wide-eyed at the Midorias. Even he heard about the Gamabako district, a place thought to be an old neighborhood that was slightly run down, when in actuality it was a hell pit filled with the vilest criminals around. You guys live there? Yep, said Izuku as he dumped the shards into the trash can. I don't know what you've heard on the news but I can tell you it's a lot worse. You have to be tough as hell to survive out there. Mitsuki looked at her friend with a deep feeling of dread inside her. Inko. Oh you don't need to worry, Mitsuki, said Inko thinking her friend was just worried. I was lucky enough to get a job with the most stubborn guy in the district. He kept things safe, I've only ever had to defend myself a few times. Mitsuki's face twisted in horror. Defend yourself. I haven't killed anyone, though I did cut that guy's finger off when he kept grabbing my butt. Mitsuki couldn't believe what she was hearing. Her oldest friend had been living in the worst part of the country for years and it changed her. Inko, why didn't you tell me? I could have helped you, I would have slept on the couch if you wanted my bed. Inko's expression softened as she saw her friend worrying about her. I'm sorry but I couldn't drag you down with me. Huh? Mitsuki blinked. What do you mean? Mom, said Izuku with an edge to his voice. Izuku, I know you're worried but the whole world knows about the trash pit. There's no use hiding it or trying to act stupid. She said before turning back to Mitsuki. Those who speak about the trash pit outside become trash themselves. That was the unsung rule of the trash pit. We don't know how but if you tried to tell anyone in the outside world about the trash pit, some way, somehow, you would die. Mitsuki thought it over for a moment, getting more questions. How was this kept a secret? Mitsuki tried to think of the next thing to ask but the words wouldn't leave her mouth. It's all thanks to Ant-Man, said Inko. I don't know how he did it but he was able to get past whatever held us down and freed us. I got stupidly lucky, thought Izuku. I had no idea Pym Particles protected me from some quirks. If I didn't have that chances or someone would be hunting me right now. 
I just said fuck it and delivered the flash drives. I just figured with my new ability to shrink I could sneak past whoever would be after me. Though it still brings up a question of how and who is responsible for all this. He thought as Nko began to tell Mitsuki about the trash pit. Oh, the elevator doors opened. When it did Time Bomb was greeted with an extraordinary sight. Holy shit, right, said Lady Aka finishing his sentence. Welcome to Project Foresight. Time Bomb felt he had walked into some sort of secret government base. There were computers and monitors all around with several people typing away and some that looked like they were hooked up to the computers themselves. This is all under a small warehouse dot 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 what the hell is this place? My father's legacy, said a voice Time Bomb turned to see an old man with a cane, walking towards them, he had a blindfold over his eyes but had a third eye on his forehead. Who's this brat? This is Time Bomb. He might have broken the record from being a common enforcer to learning the greatest secret of the trash pit, explained Lady Aka. Time Bomb, allow me to introduce True Eye, the overseer to Foresight. Time Bomb straightened himself before giving a polite bow. It's an honor, sir. True Eye's third eye looked Time Bomb up and down. I'm a brat with manners. Is this the one who got the info about Ant-Man? Yes, Time Bomb. Tell True Eye what you told me, said Lady Aka. Yes, ma'am, as Time Bomb retold what he had learned in his theory about Ant-Man's power. He had a feeling they already knew this but he did as he was told. He did not doubt if this old man couldn't kill him he had at least ten others who could. Then that means, his quirk isn't shrinking, it's changing space, said True Eye before raising his arm pointing out to the room. This is foresight. Years ago my father was hired by the government. This was back when quirks were first showing up. The government thought if they knew when villains were going to appear they could stop them quicker, or that's what they told their people. In reality, they wanted to control the quirk populace. It didn't work. It quickly crumbled but some crooked politician saw the value of it. He realized that it wouldn't work if they tried it over the entire country, but a single city, however, was much easier to accomplish. Time Bomb's eyes widened as he saw where he was going. That's how the trash pit has remained a secret, you focused on the city and reset the parameters to look for anyone who would talk about the trash pit outside of it. Lady Aka nodded while True Eye left. I like this one, he picks up on this quickly. Sir, yelled a man on a computer. We got a woman talking to her friend about the trash pit. Are they saying anything important? I uh, know, but, then forget about it, unless they are talking about something important in the trash pit, ignore it. They know about the pit in general now so focus on the priorities people, said True Eye to the room. Excuse me, said Time Bomb. I'm sorry if I'm overstepping but what did you mean that Ant-Man's quirk has to do with space? Sure I pointed his cane over to the group of people with helmets connecting to machines. We have several people with quirks that allow them to see into the future or to see another part of the time. Space and time are connected, time quirks affect other time quirks and space quirks do the same. Ant-Man's power must affect space in some way that allows him to get by our security. Don't you have people with space quirks here? Asked Lady Aka. How to get past them then? I don't know, he said in a low tone. You let me worry about that, just make sure the other groups are on board to move. Huh, Time Bum looked at Lady Aka. We're moving, or at least the group stationed in the trash pit, explained Lady Aka. The groups in the trash pit own a variety of locations throughout the country, mainly for international deals but we can use them for the time being to keep things running smoothly. Every group is working together. No, some are independent and we allow them to operate as such as long as they follow some rules we give them, but a good portion cooperates with those of us in higher standings. The only ones that don't are the lower street gangs and we don't talk to them unless we have to, they know they can do whatever as long as they don't mess with us. Wait, when did you make the rules or did the church? Lady Aka blinked for a moment. Oh you mean the church of the saints correct? No they don't work for us. They are one of two. Three groups if you count the ramen shop, that doesn't work for us or have been told to follow our rules. What? If anything the church helps more than they are an annoyance, don't mistake it as a weakness we could eliminate them at any point, but if anything they help legitimize the trash pit. As you know many of the apartments here are connected to low-income housing and work with loan offices outside of the pit, one of the many scams that a group of con artists runs. They bring in fresh blood, everyone who owes a debt to the pit just in case the street gangs get too wild. They get too wild because of the church and all the church asks is that no children under the age of 12 get involved in any crime. This even gives some of the heroes on our payroll to actually do their jobs. I see in the other two. While the second group, run by the Turk, is composed of mainly orphans, who do odd jobs around the district, not much of a threat. The last one will. Lady Aka gave a small chuckle. The last one just shows how pathetic the gangs are. True I laughed himself. If those so-called gangsters can't handle a stubborn ramen shop owner then they're not worth our time. Indeed, agreed Lady Aka. Those little groups do prove a good testing ground to see if there's anyone worth recruiting. I see, as Time Bomb was starting to connect the dots and piecing together how the trash pit was running. Foresight keeps the knowledge of the pit a secret, so the big groups can continue their deals in peace while above it looks just like a shady neighborhood. The fake heroes make sure nothing gets too wild and those other heroes don't suspect anything. With all this in place no one could ever find out the truth, we could be hiding all for one here and no one would know. H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-H-A-
It felt like Time Bomb was in the middle of a comedy show. I just said something stupid, didn't I? Lady Aka smirked. I'm afraid so. This caused Time Bomb to be slightly disappointed that the rumors were false. So all for one doesn't exist, said Time Bomb, assuming that to be the case of the laughter. No, he does, said Lady Aka, receiving a surprising look from Time Bomb. Before you were high enough in the chain to hear the rumors of all for one, but just the rumors. Time Bomb was blown away by this revelation. They're true, he's real. Yes, dot dot dot, but dot dot dot. He's a dumbass, stated True Eye, receiving a look from Aka. It's true that man is nothing more than a child with too much power. I wouldn't exactly go that far, but he's right, said Lady Aka. The rumors are true, he has the power to take and give people other quirks. Because of it he has lived for over a century. So let me ask you if he's so powerful why hasn't he taken over the world yet? Time Bum thought it over for a moment, thinking back to the rumors. I don't know, with a quirk like that and with so many followers it shouldn't be too hard to take a country or two. Exactly, said True Eye, if I had his power the world would have bowed to me by now. So why hasn't he? He'd get too bored, said Lady Aka. I'm sorry, what? Time Bum almost couldn't believe what he heard. He's bored. All for one with all of his power. He has stayed in the shadows only coming out when he wants to. Don't get us wrong he's powerful but quite childish. He only wants to use his power when he feels like it will be fun, or when he has someone good to fight, for example. His current project is training a young boy who if my intel is correct the grandchild to a hero that he fought ages ago. He's training the boy to be a villain just to spit on the hero's grave one last time. That's messed up but Time Bum couldn't find the right word. Utterly stupid, said True Eye. It's the reason none of us here work with him at all. He has so much power and yet he wastes it. He has no real goal other than mindless chaos for whenever he feels like it. I have no respect for the man, his motives are ludicrous. You can call him a villain but he's no criminal mastermind. Like the rumors might lead you to believe, if he ever took over the world he would give it back within a week when gets bored enough. Heh, not like he could now. Before he could ask Lady Aka spoke up. He lost to All Might so spectacularly that he's now hooked up to life support 24 divided by 7, very soon he might actually become a rumor. I see, said Time Bomb before bowing. I'm sorry for your time then with my question. Don't be, I needed a good laugh, said True Eye before getting serious. You just worry about dealing with Ant-Man. The entire country believed that All Might took out all organized crime in the country, but in reality, we all got smarter and sharper. Ant-Man's power is a danger to all the progress we've made. He must be eliminated. Time Boom bowed. Don't worry, I will eliminate him. Oh, so this is foresight. Asked All Might as Night Eye lead them to a small empty room with a series of computers and a chair in the center. Not as grand as I thought. This is Project Foresight 2. Zero, said Night Eye. The original project was funded by the government in full. This started as a small collaboration between several people with quirks that have the ability to see the future. Toshinori looked around the room. You did this because I got injured, didn't you? Originally, yes. I wanted to see if anyone else saw something different than I did, said Night Eye as he sat down in a chair. Though what I found was something far worse. What you find? Night Eye then handed All Might a series of photos. Death and destruction. Each photo showed a city in ruin with several injured and dead. A natural disaster. Asked Toshinori hopeful it was something that simple. I'm afraid not. As Night Eye showed him a final photo. In the center of a picture was a man with pure white hair. It was hard to make out any other detail as the photo was extremely blurry. That man is responsible for the death of billions. Toshinori took a deep breath as he digested the information. Do you have a time when this will happen? No, the most I know it will happen sometime in the next few years. Technology has advanced quite a bit since the last time Project Foresight was last operational. Those photos were made by scanning our brains while our quirks were active but covering such a large area is difficult. The most we can tell is that it will happen and the destruction will be massive, bigger than anything else. Toshinori saw where this was going. Your predictions have never been wrong, not until Ant-Man showed up. He's the first person ever to change my predictions. I don't like the idea of asking someone we know so little about but if there's a chance he can change this. He can get rid of these nightmares. Then I will be willing to get thrown into jail for him to have a chance to save us all. I don't think we need to go that far. Ant-Man whoever he is, has shown to be on our side. We just got to find a way to talk to him. Said All Might. I'm sure when everything is explained he would be more than willing to help us. I hope you're right. Who else knows about this? Asked Toshinori referring to the new Project Foresight. Only a handful of people, my sidekicks, the chief of police, and a government official but other than that we haven't told anyone about the project or our findings. We're trying to keep those visions quiet for now. I understand, you don't want the public to panic. Toshinori understood, if anyone knew what he looked like normally then the public might be worried that the number one hero is in the best shape. Night Eye with your permission I would like to inform Nezu and Gran Torino about this. With their help I'm sure we can come up with something, not just for this man in the photo but also for Ant-Man. Thank you, All Might, said Night Eye grateful but with a neutral tone. I just have a feeling convincing Ant-Man won't be as easy as you think. Oh, hey mom, just wanted to let you know I found a mug for Mitsuki, said Izuku he had left by Kugo's house to find a replacement mug for the one he had destroyed giving Katsuki a lesson. Perfect, said Inko over the phone. Izuku started to walk with a small bag with the new mug with it. 
I should be back soon. How are things with the Bakugos? Asked Izuku. Well, I think I've scared Mitsuki, confessed Inko. I've been telling her stories about everything that's happened since we moved to the trash pit. Really? Which story? Asked Izuku. The first dead body we found? The pimp running away from the gang. Wait, you didn't tell them the story with the church, did you? Not that one? No. I did though tell them about the dead body, a few of those stories actually, though I've mainly been telling stories about Mr. Ramans and what's been happening lately. Something tells me even those stories are not going too well with Mitsuki. She already offered to have us stay with her, and each story seems to scare her even more. It's all made me realize how much we've changed since we started living in the trash pit. We had to toughen up to survive in there. Izuku paused for a moment. You know would be the time if you want to move out of there, I'm sure Mr. Raman would understand. Inko was silent for a moment. I don't know if I could, I didn't even know anything was wrong when you hit Katsuki, I think I've changed too much and I like working for Mr. Raman, if it wasn't for him, things could have gone a lot worse. Even though he was young at the time, Izuku still remembered their first few months in the trash pit. He remembered his shock seeing his first dead body and how his mom was about to go tell the authorities before a woman yelled at her not to. A few days later they witnessed a woman crying saying her husband disappeared trying to tell his cousin, a pro hero, about the trash pit. Yeah, things could have been a lot worse and I'm getting the feeling that things will get much better for the trash pit in the future. I sure hope so. I know Izuku stopped as a building exploded as a giant round figure shot out of the building. Oh crap, hey mom, some guy just went full villain, I'm going to need to go around. Okay sweetie, just be careful on your way back. Don't worry mom, I'll be fine, said Izuku as he hung up and put his phone away before pulling out a small case, smaller than his hand. Time for Ant-Man to go to work. Over by the building the police were shooting at the villain. Call back up, call back up, we need a hero here now. Silence pig is, nothing can stop the armadillo, said the villain a giant man covered in thick hide. He grabbed and threw a car at the officers. Both cops ran and jumped for cover waiting for the vehicle to crash, though all they heard was a small tap. Both cops turned to see a small car between them. What? Hey, you guys alright? They both looked up. Ant-Man, Ant-Man, said armadillo before grinning. Well, well, well. Ant-Man, the big bounty of the underworld, I never thought I would have a chance for the billions on your head. Billions? Holy crap I might just turn in my own head for that money, said Izuku sarcastically. Though it clearly went over Armadillo's head. Really, wait a minute let's make a deal, 50-50. Izuku was silent for a moment, before turning to the police officer. Did he not get that was a joke? The officers just shrugged, before Ant-Man turned back to the villain. Hey buddy, think for a moment, how would I get a bounty on my head if I turn myself in? The Armadillo thought for a moment. I'm not good with big brain stuff, final offer, you get 60 and I get 50. His math physically hurt Izuku slightly. Well do we have a deal? Deal's off. They all turn to endeavor flying towards Armadillo punching him in the face with a flaming fist sending Armadillo into the side of a building. Oh hey Endeavor, nice punch, said Ant-Man waving at the hero. You don't go anywhere, you're under arrest, yelled Endeavor. Seriously, you have been meddling in hero work and been using your quirk without a hero license. Broke into mine and many other heroes agencies, I have more than enough evidence to throw you behind bars. Said Endeavor fully committed to putting Ant-Man behind bars. If you truly wished to be a hero you could have gone into a hero school and used your quirk the correct way and not as a common criminal. Ant-Man paused for a moment as he thought about how to reply. Trust me man if I could have gone to a regular hero school I would have, okay. If you hadn't noticed the place where I grew up is kind of a hell pit. Then turn yourself in, go to the police and your punishment will be lightened. You know that doesn't sound so bad but I just can't do that. As he shook his head. It's my fault that the trash pit is in chaos. A lot of things have changed because of my actions. I gotta take responsibility for that and make sure things get better. I don't just mean catching the bad guys but making sure everyone else gets to the other side of this okay. For a moment Izuku had hoped his words would move Endeavor, but the moment was cut short. Look out. Endeavor was thinking over Ant-Man's words and didn't notice that Armadillo got up and tackled Endeavor. Endeavor wasn't the number two hero for nothing as he quickly kicked Armadillo off of him and into a car, before getting up and pointing to Ant-Man. That was your fault, stop distracting me and leave this to the professionals. How was that my fault? Protested Ant-Man, before noticing Armadillo picking up another car. Damn it, the guy might be an ass but I should still help him. As he quickly grabbed a shrinking disc and quickly threw it at the car the villain was holding, it would have hit the car if Endeavor hadn't sent a fireball at the same time. The disc then flew off course hitting Armadillo directly. Oh shit. Endeavor looked where Armadillo was at before turning to Ant-Man. What did you do to him? Give me a sec? Well yeah. I can fix this. As Ant-Man shrunk down Izuku prayed that Armadillo wasn't having a meltdown. Hey, Armadillo. Don't look down on me. Screamed Armadillo as he pointed upwards at Endeavor. Just because you're big doesn't mean you can match strength with me, Armadillo. He's dot 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 fine. Izuku was surprised by this development as he looked at the small criminal actually trying to pick a fight with a full-sized endeavor. Maybe it's because his quirk is a mutation quirk and not a transformation or emitter quirk. Ant-Man, yelled Armadillo bringing Izuku out of his thoughts. Don't think that just because you have changed my size that means you've won, I will still crush you and take your bounty. Izuku had no idea how to respond to the man. 
Gotta give the guy props for keeping his composer in this situation, but he's crazy if he thinks he can fight like that. Izuku learned about the pin particles from shrinking his friends. They couldn't move like he could because when shrunken via disc, their mass isn't shrunken properly, meaning they can't jump around or hit people like a bullet. So right now Armadillo is just small with only some of the benefits that Izuku has. Okay, let's wrap this up. I got places to be. You cannot stop me, yelled Armadillo before freezing. For a moment Izuku was worried something was wrong with his quirk until he spoke. Spider. Huh. Izuku looked over to see that indeed there was a spider close to them but was clearly staying away from the two. Yeah, that's a spider. S-P-I-D-E-R-R-R-R. Shrieked Armadillo before he started running in a circle. Get it off, get it off, get it off. What? There's none on you, calm down. Izuku quickly realized he wasn't listening to him as his screams were drowning everything else out. Calm down, calm down. I have several ants that can deal with the spider. Creepy crawly, creepy crawly. He kept screaming and running around like a madman. Okay, okay, I'll grow you back, just calm down. As Izuku got close to the man, time to let Endeavor deal with you. Above them, Endeavor waited for something to happen as he could not see them in their tiny forms. What the hell is going on? They're too tiny, I can't see them at all. Boss, as Burnin, Kaido and other psychics showed up. Hold it, don't move, ordered Endeavor. Ant-Man is here and he shrunk down himself and the villain. Before anyone could ask any more questions, they reappeared to their full size, with Armadillo still screaming. Crawly, crawly. Armadillo then fell to the ground in front of the psychics hugging Kaido's leg. Please I surrender, just get the crawlies away. All the heroes just stared at the big guy hugging the psychics leg in fear. What the hell did you do to him? Asked Burnin. Nothing, said Izuku honestly. He's just a dumbass with a massive fear of spiders. Bullshit, yelled Endeavor. He's crying like a child over there. Is this what happens when you shrink people? Izuku was about to answer but he felt his phone buzz. Text message, shit, I'm late. Look buddy I'm sorry but I got to go. You're not going anywhere. Endeavor tried to grab Ant-Man but he shrunk down, flying away on one of his ants. Oh. After a recent interview, the number two hero Endeavor is using his rank to put an arrest on sight order on the vigilante of the trash pit, Ant-Man. Said the reporter on the TV. For his reason, we have the clip right here, take a look. As the news transition took place showing Endeavor after arresting Armadillo. Ant-Man is not a man of the law, he has broken it several times and his quirk has shown to have a negative effect on anyone caught in it. No matter his intentions he's shown to be a far greater danger to those around him, therefore I am enacting my standings as the number two hero to issue an order to any hero that confronts Ant-Man to capture him on sight. After that Endeavor went on to reassure that he and his agency will help the Gamabako district recove. Genta muted the TV. Well, shit. Izuku then used the couch pillow to muffle his scream, before tossing it across the room, this is bullshit. So does this mean, that the heroes will be after us, even harder now? Asked Hannah. Not quite, said Benta. They would still prioritize the villains over us, but they aren't going to ignore us either. I guess this means we ain't teaming up with heroes anytime soon, said Kenta. Well we weren't planning for that in the first place, said Sarah. We all have broken quite a few laws, we really should try to do things on our own. Sarah's right, said Izuku calmer than he was before. Part of me was hoping that we could at least talk with some of the heroes, but now, we should do our best to avoid them. So what do we do now? Asked Kento. The night's young and I'm sure we talked about taking on some gangster didn't we? Said Izuku with a smile that caused his friends to grin. Sorry Endeavor, you do what you have to do and so will I as Ant-Man continued to protect the streets. Chapter 10 Street says hello. Hello everyone I hope you have been having a wonderful afternoon, said the reporter. I am reporting live from directly inside the Gamabako district or as the locals call it the trash pit. Today we have another in a long line of local gangs that have been captured by the vigilante known as the Ant-Man. He has swooped in and attacked another gang last night right in their hideout. Even though he has officially been dubbed a vigilante he is being hailed as a hero by the locals but a villain by some of the top heroes including Endeavor who still claims that Ant-Man should be on the top wanted list but to everyone's surprise. The vigilante has a few supporters amongst the top heroes including the number one hero All Might who believes that Ant-Man can be a force for good though these recent events might change his mind. Evidence shows that Ant-Man or someone who has been following Ant-Man has been robbing the hideout of the gangs he's caught. This might take into question his morals and his motives. Bullshit, they can't prove that, said Kenta. Kenta, we are literally watching the news on a TV we stole from the last gang. Pointed out Sarah as she gestured to the new flat screen TV in the office. And you're sitting on a couch we stole from a gang two days ago. Hey we only took this stuff because they bought it legally, we stole from thieves, said Kenta as if it justified it. Whatever, said Sarah, hey where are the others, and what are you doing? Oh, I was just going over what's broke and what works around the anthill. I kind of realized just because this place was clean doesn't mean everything works. I went through each room and used my phone charger to test each outlet and to see if all the plumbing works. Turns out we need to get a few things fixed. Sarah took a look at the list. Wow, not gonna lie I'm somewhat impressed. I didn't even think to check on the other rooms me and my sister picked. Yeah well, I figured since this place was my idea, I should make sure it works, said Kenta. Nice, so where are the others? Found them, sought Hannah as she poked her head inside. They just came back with a van. 
Oh yeah, Izuku's new project, said Kenta as he jumped off the couch and rushed to the garage past the girls. New project, asked Hannah. Sarah shrugged. Don't know, come on. As they went into the garage they saw Izuku and Benta pulling things out of the front of a white van. What the heck are those two doing? Asked Hannah. No idea, said Genta as he started eating some fires. They just told me to pick up the van, thanks for the food by the way. Don't thank us, said Sarah, Izuku was the one that paid for it. As she made her way down to the van she saw Izuku muttering a bunch of nonsense. Yo Izuku, Izuku, Izuku was clearly in his own world so Sarah took a deep breath while getting right behind him. Izuku, ah, Izuku jumped hitting his head on the roof of the van, oh, Sarah. As he rubbed his head, hey what's up, sorry, didn't mean for you to hit your head, as she rubbed his head, but we got the food, you asked for, food, before a massive growl came from his stomach. Yeah, so that doesn't happen. You left us money to get you food if you ever forgot to eat again. Reminded Hannah holding out a bag of food for him. Right, thank you. As he took the food from Hannah. I really need to learn not to forget to eat. Yeah, you're a hero now, and we can't have our hero working on an empty stomach. Hey, at least he's remembering to regularly work out, said Benta. I see him every morning working out in the gym. Gym, said Genta. Yeah, we set up a gym upstairs next to the office, said Hannah. Kenna just installed a punching bag. Yeah, I'm going to start working on some of those boxing exercises, said Kenta as he did a few jabs in the air. I want to make sure that punch I gave playback wasn't just a fluke. Genta then turned to Benta. Have you been using the gym? Benta shook his head. No, I've been busy setting up the computers and helping Izuku with the new project. Ah, oh, don't worry, said Sarah as she stepped forward reaching in her pocket. You can help me and my sister breaking these in. She quickly took out and extended a baton surprising the guys. Like me and my sister found them when we were grabbing stuff from the last gang. I'm pretty sure I can crack a skull with this baby. Jenna took a step back from the girl. I think I'm good. Jenna kept his eyes on the baton as he noticed the bandages on her fingers and her sister's fingers. Have you two been training? Of course we have, said Hannah as she leaned on her sister with one arm then pumped her other arm. What happened to me is not happening again. Did you guys find like a teacher or something? They scratched their heads a little, not really we're kind of winging it right now. But I think we're getting better, said Sarah we're at least training our muscles. Jenta then turned to Benta, how about you? You already asked me, pointed out Benta before looking at Izuku. I've been helping out Izuku since I'm still a bit computer savvy and can keep up with some of the Pym Particle stuff. Who looked at Izuku. Izuku swallowed his food realizing his friend needed a pep talk. Yeah, I've been seeing what else can I make to give me an edge in a fight I'm currently workshopping a gun that shoots Pym Particles. A projector of Pym Particles to grow a mass amount of ants all at once, oh and currently working on a car. Jenta then turned to the van. An ant mobile. Not exactly, I was thinking of making something for you guys, said Izuku getting all their attention. I don't know when but eventually I might be put in a situation where I might need a rescue or something and when that happens I'm going to need you and that quirk of yours. Me, said Jenna a little surprised. Ah, uh, Izuku, shrinking hasn't exactly been the best for anyone other than you. True, that's with the suit, said Izuku before grabbing his notes, but I believe I have made progress in fixing that. I've been doing some calculations comparing the notes and the old pimp particles to the ones I make. I think I might have cracked some of the code, I still need to do some more tests, but I hope soon I'll be able to shrink you guys with no problems. You might not be able to hop around like me or lift objects like me but still shrinking alone has many uses. Oh neat, said Genta in a neutral tone. Izuku thought quickly and grabbed an RC car off the desk. Here, check this out, as he put the toy car on the ground and turned it on. He drove it in the center of the room, checked this out before it hit a button and the RC car turned big into the size of a car. Whoa, it's full size now, said Kenta. No, it's still an RC car, said Benta. But does this mean, you figured out how to go big yourself, Izuku? Izuku slowly frowned. No, I'm still trying to figure that one out. All simulations show if I do grow big I might rip myself in half, or the best scenario I pass out. The others turned grim at that thought. But this RC car can, and it has a mic and camera, with an ability to cling to walls when it's small and it can go super small, watch. As Izuku shrunk down the RC car down to its regular size before shrinking it again even small to the point no one could see it. Here, as he held up a phone showing all of them from below, you can control it with this phone and even listen to whatever is around it. Sarah then made a sly smile, is this how you've been spying on all the girls? Huh, Izuku knew she was screwing with him but couldn't help but turn slightly red causing the girl to laugh. Sarah, stop messing with Izuku, said her sister before hearing a buzz from her phone. Oh hey I just got a message from Enko, this got Izuku's attention. It's busy at the ramen shop and Mr. Ramen is offering overtime for us. Oh cool, said Sarah who didn't mind getting some extra cash. Did she say anything else? Oh yeah, bring Izuku, he has a visitor at the ramen shop. As everyone slowly looked at Izuku. Well, crap, was all Izuku said. Any idea who it is? Asked Kenta. With my track record, it could be a client, an enemy, a hero, or something entirely different, said Izuku as he grabbed a bag of food in one hand. But if it's from my mom that means they want to talk, so I shouldn't keep them waiting. Before handing the RC controller to Genta. Here practice with this, I think you'll enjoy it. 
Thanks, said Jenda as he took the controller. Oh, a car raced down the street in the trash pit with four criminals inside being chased by a group of heroes. The criminals quickly brought out their assault rifles and started firing at the heroes from the windows of the vehicles. Got him it, as one of the criminals started firing his AK-47 at the heroes chasing them. Hurry up and lose them. What the fuck do you think I'm trying to do? Said the driver. There's too many. Above them, Hawks flew ready to act. Okay enough of that. As he used his feathers to blow out the tires, the car with the criminals swerved before spinning out hitting a light pole. Ooh, that must have hurt. Though very quickly the four criminals in the car got out each brandishing their own assault rifle. As they began firing at both Hawks and the other heroes, looks like that didn't hurt them enough. On the rooftops overlooking the event stood Time Bomb and Sir Dazzle. Ah, this a perfect spot to lure out Ant-Man, said Dazzle. I assassinate the number three hero and make a scene that should lure the insect out. That's a stupid idea, said Time Bomb as he ignored the angry glare from the flamboyant villain. I accept the fact that you want to be the next one to take a crack at Ant-Man but killing Hawks is just going to get other pro heroes' attention. Our focus is Ant-Man and only Ant-Man. Then what the fuck have we been doing? Asked Dazzle in a low voice. For the past week we've been doing nothing but getting information and watching idiots commit crime. Time Bomb then gave the man a look as he got close, getting information. So nothing like Rad Volts happens again so we don't have another fuck up. But fine, if you're so bloodthirsty go down there, kill the heroes. Dazzle gave him a confused look for a moment as Tia Mebum paused. All you have to do is deal with the church. What? Dazzle then looked down the street and saw what was walking down the street. I am not dealing with those bitches. He said quickly before slowly backing away. Then shut up and watch, said Time Bomb. Let's see how the heroes deal with this. The criminals took cover behind their car as they tried to and failed to hit Hawks until one of them saw them. Guys stop firing, stop firing. The other three slowly stopped firing as they turned to look at what was walking down the road. Oh fuck, said one under their breath. Hawks raised an eyebrow before turning to see what they were looking at, none. Hawks couldn't believe what he had just said let alone what he was seeing. Walking down the street were three young women all wearing none attire. The girl in the middle had long blonde hair with American features. The one on the left had red hair that was braided hair that looped back up. And the last girl on the right had short black hair with round glasses on her face. Hawks' attention moved back to the criminals as they had completely dropped their weapons to the ground and stood up straight. The heroes then watched as the nuns just calmly walked right between them. What the? As they passed, Hawks noticed that the criminals looked scared out of their minds. It didn't take a genius to realize that they were scared of the nuns. The nuns again. Hawks turned to see Death Arms and his group staring at the nuns. What do you mean again? Asked Hawks as he landed. Yesterday we're chasing a runner and he froze when the nuns walked by, said Death Arms as they watched them walk away. Maybe someone should talk to them, said Camry Woods. No, yelled a criminal. The heroes then noticed that the criminals actually picked up their guns again, before Kami Woods said anything. The criminal then dropped his gun again before getting on the ground in front of Kamui Woods. Please don't do the police, he begged. What, said Death Arms as he and the other heroes stood confused. Those aren't just nuns are they, said Hawks. Let me put to you this way, I'm willing to throw down right now with all might before I even think about fucking with the church. It's the same reason why no one fucks with maids in Ronapur. Mount Lady raised an eyebrow, Ronapur. Church, what church? Asked Hawks. The criminal gulped, the church you don't fuck with. Hawks hummed for a moment as he put a hand under his own chin and thinking poses for a moment. Well then consider this challenge accepted. Fucking idiot, said the criminal as he turned his hand into a pistol and attempted to shoot Hawks who just used his feathers to pin the guy down. You guys can handle these guys right, said Hawks as he flew in the air. Cool, I'm going to talk to a few sisters, as he left leaving them to handle the criminals. Hawks flew around for a bit but couldn't find the nuns. Where the hell could they have gone? They were just walking they couldn't have gotten far. Maybe I should look for their church, that should work. In the meantime, I should look into those two that were watching us. As Hawks flew in a different direction. Though, Jenna sat silently in the parking lot of the Ant Hill, as he kept the RC car turning in circles. Both Kenta and Benta were getting worried, it had been a very long time since they've ever seen their friend like this. After losing the staring contest, Kenta walked up to Jenta. Hey, buddy, how you doing? Doing alright. Jenna stopped the toy car before looking at Kenta, no I'm not doing alright. He said in a slightly raised tone, I dropped the ball, man, how the hell did I drop the ball and you didn't? Hey, what's that supposed to mean? Kenta asked quickly feeling he might have just been insulted. Dude, you dragged us around from hotel work so you could just flirt with a girl. You're constantly forgetting things and somehow causing more trouble without even trying than an actual criminal and yet you somehow found a way to do something to help out. And I'm supposed to be the one with street smarts here. Hey I can be smart too, yelled Kenta as he grabbed Jenna by the collar. Bullshit, man. As Jenna grabbed Kenta's collar. Do you have any idea how many times I've had to bail your dumbass out when you accidentally pissed someone off or walked into something you weren't supposed to? Ben aside as the other two started, this wasn't the first time these two had argued like this. A few times he and Izuku would join in, they're going to be at this for a while. Thought Ben as he could already see how this was going to play out. The two of them would argue for a bit before apologizing and then they would all get food somewhere. I guess I have a minute to kill. He thought as he took out his phone before Jenta suddenly stopped yelling, Oh crap did I miss something. 
Genta. Genta was looking aware of them as he saw something driving down the road. Hey, Benta, do you see that van's license's plate? Benta followed his eyes and saw a white van driving slowly down the road. A white van was nothing unusual around these parts. But the odd thing was the way it was driving. In the trash pit you drive slowly if you are about to start something or you're looking for someone. Benta then looked at the license's plate. It's in English. That's an American van. Kenta let go of Genta. What's an American van doing in the trash pit? Genta quickly grabbed the RC car. Come on. They followed the van on foot which wasn't too hard since it wasn't going very fast at all. They hide in an alleyway following the van. Okay, this is a stupid idea, but grab some rocks and start throwing them at the van. Kenta and Benta were confused. Just do it. The two nodded to each other before they grabbed a few rocks and started throwing them at the van. The van quickly stopped as the back door quickly opened and an American man quickly stuck his head out the door. Hey, quite, you damn brats. Kenta and Benta turned and ran as Genta quickly threw the RC car at the van shrinking it in mid-flight, before turning and running back to the guys. Did you throw the RC car into the van? Asked Benta. Yeah, said Genta, as he took out the controller with the phone connected to it. When he turned it on, they all saw that the inside of the van was filled to the brim with technology and computers. What the? Hey, what are those two saying? Asked Kenta. I'll get close. Try getting above them, said Benta. Izuku designed this thing to climb up walls. Genta nodded, got it, as he focused his quirk. His quirk perfect driver, it allows Genta to operate any vehicle perfectly, making him the best getaway driver. His quirk can also work on certain other controllers like remote control cars or drones. Genta quickly maneuvered the RC car to the ceiling of the van as they got a good view of the van and could hear what the two in the back were saying. Just calm down man, said one of the guys in the van, I've got a few little shits in my old neighborhood, stuff like this happens all the time. It still is a pain in the ass, do you have any idea how much trouble we had to go through getting this van to Japan? I know, I know, just forget about it, and let's get back to work. As they both turned to their computers. Any signs of pin particles around here? Too many, said the angry one. Ant-Man has been shrinking and growing objects all over the place, hard to say where he is, when he keeps using the suit everywhere. Then I guess the professor was right, whoever Ant-Man is he must have figured out how to make more pin particles, that or his quirk allows him to use the suit without any particles, to begin with. Let's hurry up and track the guy down first, the quicker we find him the sooner, I can get back to I island and then back stateside, I need an authentic burger. This place may not be up to your standards of burgers, but it does have good noodles. Maybe later. The three wombats watched the scene with worry, scientist. Asked Kenta. I island, said Benta. These guys are the science dudes, the ones that ruddy guy stole from to get the suit, said Genta. These guys are going after Izuku. Oh, Izuku. Izuku followed the voice where he saw the last person he expected to be sitting at one of the tables in the ramen shop, Achako. What are you doing here? Achako blushed a bit. I wanted to see you again and I wanted to thank you for saving me. Oh, bye. Izuku wasn't expecting this he then noticed his mother standing behind the counter signaling him to take a seat and talk to her. Izuku gave his mom a look before taking a seat across Achako. You don't have to thank me, my body just kind of moved on its own, I was just trying to do the right thing is all. Achako shook her head, you still saved me, that means a whole lot to me and my parents. They didn't want me to come back here to this area but I had to come and see you again. This caused Izuku to go wide-eyed and his mother to smile. That's my boy, she said before noticing Sarah and Hannah giving the girl slight glares. And Ko sighed. I don't want drama in my family so if either of you is going to do something I suggest doing it quickly, I doubt he'll be single for long. As the three of them went to work, Izuku and Achako began to start talking about other subjects like school and heroes. If Izuku was honest he enjoyed talking to the girl it was a nice change of pace. Oh wow, so you're going to be making hero equipment, you think you could make something for me? Maybe, we both have to get into our respected schools, said Izuku, not to be a downer but what do you think of your odds of getting into UA? Achako frowned slightly, to be honest I don't know. There's going to be a lot of competition and the rate to get in is super low. Izuku smiled, I'm sure you're going to do just great. Though if you want my advice I'd say you should train as much as you can, if it's your dream you should try your best to make it happen. Achako smiled as she filled with confidence before it disappeared as she saw something behind Izuku, who Izuku, who's that? Izuku turned around seeing a small girl in dirty clothing watching him from outside the window. The second they made eye contact she began making a weird hand signal. One that made Izuku inwardly scream, but he kept a straight face as he turned back to Achako. I might need to take this real quick, as he got out of his seat. Just stay right there and I'll be right back. Okay, said Achako as she saw him walk outside. I wonder what that was about. She wasn't the only one with that question as both Hannah and Sarah looked at each other before they saw that Inko was turning slightly pale make them both have the same thought, this can't be good. Izuku walked outside to the small girl, okay what does he want? The little girl wordlessly smiled before taking out a phone handing it to Izuku, before taking out oversized headphones and putting them on and playing music. Izuku was confused at first before looking back at the phone. Turk. The text then appeared on the screen, don't say that name. It read with no audio. No audio and you don't even want your messenger hearing about this, Izuku started to grasp the importance of this conversation. 
This must be big. It is. The answer is still no, said Izuku quickly. I'm not working for you anymore. I did a few jobs. More than enough to get that favor from you. We're done. You're correct. It reads surprisingly, Izuku. We are done, but we are not done with the trash pit. Not yet. What the hell are you talking about? Asked Izuku not liking where this was going. It would be a real shame if your school found out about some of the jobs I ask of you. Are you blackmailing me? Izuku had to stop himself from laughing. I should remind you that I know your shit as well. If I go down then so do you. I know, I'm just making a point that both of us could use a bit of leverage for insurance. Leverage that can keep us from going to jail for our past deeds, and hopefully enough to keep both of our groups from any legal repercussions. Izuku paused for a moment, I'm listening. Simple, I need you to get evidence on a few key individuals and gangs that I know are still out there. They're big enough to where Ant-Man can't take them out on his own and smart enough to avoid the heroes while also being small enough to not have a lot of backup from the big players in the trash pit. I get it, you want me to do what I do best and get evidence so when the time comes and cops show up, we can bargain our way out. Correct, as the screen also showed some flare with some bright lights, my group has been on its own since the beginning, we don't have the protection like other groups do, if I'm going to protect my own, I need to be prepared for anything. Izuku couldn't deny what he was saying and he did know the length the Turk would go for his people. He then looked back at the girl who was still listening to her music looking away. The groups you want me to go after are the gangs you deal with, aren't they? Them and a few others, the Turk admitted through text. That's why I need you. You're the best there is at this and you have no connections with any of these groups and they have long since outlived their usefulness to us. You mean to you guys, I'm not a part of your gang. You once were, texted the Turk before a brief pause. You were once that despite little boy doing anything he could to get rid of the debt that was forced upon him and his mother. I helped you out back then, the Turk helped you, and now I am asking you to help us one final time so that someday the other kids might have a chance to go and be free of the trash pit like you. Izuku closed his eyes and took a deep breath already knowing he was going to help. A lot of the people that work for the Turk are orphans or young kids like him and he couldn't turn his back on them. But he could get something out of this. If I do this, then I'm going to need some things. You, and man, and the ghost have my full support, texted the Turk. Don't look so surprised. I know that you and the ghost are working helping out Ant-Man. Don't worry, your secret is safe with me. Good, said Izuku. Good, that means him and his information network hasn't discovered who I am yet. Izuku then cleared his throat. Send me the targets through the usual channels and I'll send you a list of things I might need. Also don't expect me to instantly hop on this job. I'll get to it when I can, and depending on the size of the list, I'll have it done before I start school. It's good to have you back, Izuku, said the Turk before the screen went dark. Don't get used to it, he said not sure if the Turk heard him, before tapping the girl's shoulder and handing her the phone, you want a bowl of ramen for the road. He asked her but the girl simply shook her head and left down the street. Izuku then returned inside to Achako, so what was that about? She asked, oh just a customer updating me on a job, I work on mechanics to get some cash, you know everything from working on toys to helping my friend on his car, said Izuku trying to cover his tracks, and thankfully Achako bought it. Izuku then noticed his mom looking at him with a worried look. Izuku gave her a small smile saying they would talk about it later. So, is every day around here dangerous? Asked Ochako. No, quite a few days around calm and kind of relaxing, said Izuku. Like today. B-O-O-M as a massive sound reverberated through the restaurant, scaring a few people including Ochako who gave Izuku a surprised look. Okay, not like today, said Izuku as he wondered what caused that noise. What was that? I don't know, um, Izuku had to think quickly cause he had few guesses. Hey you wanted to talk about equipment or training you wanted to do, right? Got any ideas? Oh yeah, I've written a notebook at home about them. Great, said Izuku quickly as he stood up and pulled out his phone and put it next to Achako sending her his contact information. You go home today and look that stuff over and bring it back tomorrow and we can talk about it then. Uh sure, that sounds great. Great, then it's a date, said Izuku as he turned to the door. Sorry just gonna go quickly to check that out, bye. As he left not even realizing everything he just said, leaving Akako to turn a very bright shade of red, as the word date echoed inside her head while it left the two sisters behind her in shock and one happy mother. Oh, I'm getting real bored you know, complained Sir Dazzle as he and Time Bomb were making their way down an alley, I want to do something. He then noticed that Time Bomb was ignoring him. Maybe I should kill you. I'm not ignoring you, said Time Bomb. Dazzle stopped as he looked at Time Bomb, what are you doing, where are we going? Nowhere, just trying to lose our tail, said Time Bomb causing Dazzle to quickly scan the area. Or waiting for them to do something, Hawks. The two of them heard a whistle as they turned to see Hawks standing on the rails of a fire escape above them. You knew I was tailing you, huh? How'd you know? That would be telling, said Time Bomb. It was an educated guess. I was looking at the news app on my phone that said Hawks took care of some villains before flying away and not returning to the scene. That meant either a he was actually able to track down the nuns or b he was following us. Ha, huh, you're something, got a name, asked Hawks. They call me Time Bomb. Time Bomb, huh. As Hawks looked at the man. This guy is totally calm, he's not some small fish, no he's giving off some real shark vibes right about now. I need to take care of him quick. And I am Sir Dazzle yelled the man in anger getting the other two's attention. 
Ox looked at the man in the leotard in confusion. Okay, wasn't really asking you, buddy. I just want your boss here. Dazzle's face turned blank as he stared at Hawks before his face turned pure red as he swelled with rage. I'm going to fucking kill you. As he quickly kicked the air in front of him, Hawks quickly listened to instincts and dodged as he felt several waves of air pass him, cutting the fire escape in the wall he was just on. Holy shit, those attacks are fast and hard to see. This guy is not just some hench goon, needs to end this. Hawks then spread his feathers out ready to launch them for an attack, before Dazzle started a rapid fire kick, hitting more than half of the feathers. Shit, as Hawks tried to get some altitude but was stopped by Dazzle's air slices. If you think I am just some small fire then think again, you piece of a shit bird brain. Sir Dazzle grinned as he had Hawks trapped in the alley. I got him now, I'll kill the number three hero. No one outshines Sir Dazzle, no one. Dazzle froze as he saw something big on the alley wall appear. A giant number five. Point four. Dazzle knew what that meant. The wall had been turned into a bomb turned to see Time Bomb who was now standing outside of the alleyway on the street waving at him. Point three. Nice job Dazzle, by Hawks. Point two. Point one. Time Bomb you piece of shit. Point zero. B-O-O-M. Chapter eleven running fuse. Izuku and his Ant-Man suit made it to what remained of the buildings on a small flying ant. What happened here? Did something blow up in between both of the buildings? Thought Izuku, in any case, I need to check for survivors, as Izuku ordered his ants to look for people while he scanned the rumble when suddenly some of it started moving. Izuku regrew to full size as he started digging through the rumble. He then saw something red before it opened to reveal someone inside. Hawks. Hawks looked up. Ant-Man, he said as the vigilante helped him up now that's two I owe you. You okay? What happened here? I was following two criminals when I got into a fight with one while the other one turned the wall of the building into a bomb. I acted quick and used my feathers to shield myself but damn did that hurt felt like I got slapped by all might. I don't think anything's broken but damn does it hurt. Wait you said, one of them turned the side of the building into a bomb. Izuku started to look around. Yeah, he was willing to kill his associate to bury me, he said his name was. Suddenly a huge chunk of the rubble was cut and launched upward as the dusted and ragged form of Sir Dazzle appeared. T-I-M-E-B-O-O-O-M-B. He roared. Time bum, said Ant-Man. Wait time bum was here. Yeah, he was the one that blew up the building. Wait, how do you know time bum? Yeah, he used to work for a sex trafficking's a hole. Excuse me, yelled Sir Dazzle interrupting their conversation. Oh right this guy, said Hawks as he noticed the man with pure rage in his eyes. Careful this guy isn't some goon, as he remembered Sir Dazzle's fighting experience. Shit, cause of the explosion, I only got a few good feathers left. Some of them I can still use but no one I am using them to fly. Wait a minute, as Izuku recognized the man, aren't you that one guy that killed the other heroes because they stopped your ice skating performance? Hawks looked at Ant-Man in disbelief, what? Those bastards stole my spotlight, yelled Sir Dazzle as tears rolled down his eyes. I had been practicing that routine for months and then those C-list heroes had to barge in and stop some bomber from blowing up the ice ring. They got on the front page of the newspaper and had an extensive interview, not me. Wait, so your whole motivation for becoming a villain is because some heroes ruined your performance to stop a bomber? Oh no, I performed before that all happened and won first prize, he said with a smug smile. But what they did was far worse, they stole my spotlight, they made everyone forget my prefect performance, they got more attention than you and you killed them when they tried to apologize, right, said Ant-Man as he remembered the story, but to be sure he took out his spare phone. You shut the fuck up. It's my story and I'm the one telling it, yelled Sir Dazzle like a toddler. But yes, they did come and apologize because they realized their inferiority. Killing them was a mercy and their deaths gave me a thirst for blood. No, they went to go and apologize to your manager for almost destroying the place, said Izuku as he showed Hawks the phone. Yeah right here, former gold medalist Sir Basil lashes out and attacks heroes when they came to apologize to the event manager. The hero dies later in hospital due to prior health issues, causing the skater to leave the world of figure skating in shame. The disgraced figure skater started to shake as he was filled with rage. Those uncultured idiots called me Sir Basil. That's what he's angry about, thought both Ant-Man and Hawks. I'll kill them, how dare they screw up my name. I'll rip them from limb to limb. Vowed Sir Dazzle as he started making plans to find and kill the reporters, but first he had to deal with the heroes and then Time Bomb, T-I-M-E-B-O-M-B, -E as he remembered how the man tried to blow him up. Where is he? Where did that fucking bastard go? Down the street watching him from the distance was Time Bomb waving at him from the distance. T-I-M-E-B-O-M-B. -E Dazzle then used his quirk to skate on the ground after his former boss. Shit, said Ant-Man as he shrunk down and hitched a ride on a flying ant. Wait Ant-Man don't. Ah Hawks clutched his sides. Shit that explosion did more damage than I thought. How did that guy not get hurt? Hawks then summoned his remaining feathers to fly into the sky. Good I still got enough feathers to fly. I might be injured but I'm still in this game. Oh. Dazzle skid to a halt as he followed Time Bum to an old warehouse. Come out you traitorous bastard, yelled Dazzle. I'll make your death quick and beautiful if you do. Well, you're a bigger idiot than I thought. Dazzle looked up to see Time Bomb standing above him on the catwalk, die, as Dazzle sent a kick blade at Time Bomb. Time Bomb remained calm and tilted his head dodging the attack. While you at least served your purpose, you brought Ant-Man to his death. This confused Dazzle and Izuku who had just flown in. 
What is he talking about? thought Izuku before time bomb threw several stones at the small roof windows above them. Evasive maneuvers. As Izuku's ant started flying dodging the shards of glass as the shards flew past Izuku, he saw small digit numbers on each shard of glass. Oh, shit yelled Izuku as the shards exploded causing Izuku to fly off his ant and to regrow to full size. Dazzle saw Ant-Man suddenly reappear. Ant-Man, he was here this whole time. Time Bomb watched as Izuku struggled to stand. Of course he was, this is his grave after all. As Time Bomb taps the railing of the catwalk, Izuku looked up and saw as a spark ran across the rail of the catwalk to the wall above Izuku. It was small but against the fading red bricks, Izuku could see a strange series of lines across the wall. Using his helmet, Izuku saw that the line was made of a bunch of zeros. He can turn his timer into a long fuse. Izuku turned and jumped away. The spark reached the decimal causing the wall to explode at the same time Izuku shrunk down hoping his small body would be able to dodge the shrapnel. Though to his surprise, it was not necessary as a feather caught him and flew him upward as hawks came in through one of the roof windows. Ant-Man you okay? Yeah, said Izuku catching his breath, thanks for the save. No problem, hawks then looked down at Time Bomb who stared back. That guy ain't some scrub, he's trained. Izuku agreed. I thought this guy was just some nobody goon but he planned this, using a pawn to lure me here where he had the window and the wall set up to kill me. Izuku kept his eyes on Time Bomb who had not moved. We can't underestimate him. You're ignoring me, huh? The three of them looked down to the ground level to see Dazzle glaring at all of them. He was glaring at all of them with a look so heated you would have expected his eyes to light on fire or shoot beams out of his eyes. I am Sir Dazzle, the best figure skater in the country. I was one of the most handsome bachelors a few years ago. Now I am the most handsome villain across the country and you all have the audacity to ignore me. Okay what the hell is with this guy? Asked Ant-Man. This was the last straw for Dazzle as he screamed and did a front flip, sending a massive blade upward destroying the roof and causing chunks of the ceiling to fall to the ground. Hawks moved out of the way with Ant-Man still on his feather. Look as ridiculous as that guy as we should probably deal with him. He's got some weird quirk that allows making wind blades out of his kicks. Izuku thought it over for a moment, then he's a perfect opponent for me. You handle Time Bomb, I'll get the skater reject. Hawks was about to disagree. Time Bomb can turn objects like the ground into bombs. I don't think he has much of an anti-air arsenal. And the moron down there can't hit me if he doesn't see me coming. Hawks smiled at the idea. All right, tic-tac, let's go. Hawks sent the feather with Ant-Man on it towards Dazzle. Izuku jumped right before Dazzle sent another blade kick at him taking the feather out but Ant-Man turned back into his regular size and kicked Dazzle hard enough to send him tumbling backward to the ground. Dazzle slowly raised his head, you piece of how where did he go? Dazzle looked around trying to find Ant-Man but couldn't see him until Ant-Man jumped and punched him in the gut. Wah, you stop you distrusting insect. As he sent a kick randomly hitting part of the wall, hoping to hit Ant-Man but those hopes were dashed as Izuku punched him in the face. How dare you? Time Bum watched this from above. Moron has no chance, as he took several coins out of his pocket, I'm guessing that means I'm fighting you. As he looked up at Hawks. Oh don't sound too disappointed, as Hawks manipulated one of his feathers turning it into a blade. I'll make this quick. Time Bum threw the coins between them causing a small smoke screen as he turned and ran down the catwalk. You ain't getting away from me. As Hawks flew after him, sending some feathers at him. Time Bum saw this and jumped off the catwalk onto some boxes before jumping down to the ground left. Not bad Parker, but that won't help you. Hawks sent two feathers down at Time Bomb. The bomb man saw this and then tapped two boxes causing several sparks to form on the boxes. The sparks followed a trail down below the boxes before making an explosion, causing the boxes to fly upward at Hawks. Oh crud, as Hawks maneuvered out of the way of the boxes, as he was rolling in the air he saw Time Bomb touch the wall making a new spark that followed a trail of tiny zeros. Enough of that. As he redirected his two feathers hitting the line the spark was following and the other at Time Bomb who dodged at the last second. Hawks floated in the air and looked at the wall where the line of zeros was. So it does work like some kind of fuse, cut it before it gets to the end, and no boom. Time Bum just smirked. Yeah, you're right. When I realized my quirk had a decimal point that made me wonder what would happen if I add a whole bunch of zeros to it and who would have guessed it, my quirk gets a fuse of some kind. Interesting, said Hawks as he eyed Time Bum. His quirk is much more unique than I first thought, not to mention with a fuse that means he could have booba-trapped the place. He was using this place to kill Ant-Man after all. Time Bomb then held a coin in his hand before flipping it into the air. As it landed it rolled for a moment before causing a small explosion, like a firecracker, but it was enough to set off several other lines of Time Bomb fuses. What? His bombs can set off his fuses. Pay attention, yelled Time Bomb as he threw several playing cards at Hawks. Hawks quickly batted them away with his feather blade as Time Bomb started to throw other objects at Hawks. Hawks kept moving but small explosions kept happening all around. Okay, I'm getting tired of all this random bullshit. Then something caught his eye as he saw part of the railing of the catwalk had a fuse wrapped around it that was almost about to blow, quickly using his feather blade to cut it from the catwalk. Here, have a taste of your own medicine. As he kicked the railing towards Time Bomb. Time Bomb moved but not away from the railing but towards it, catching it. Hawks waited for it to explode but it didn't. 
that you thought it would explode in my hand, said Time Bomb held the railing showing as more digits were being added. As long as I can touch the timer I can manipulate it. Well fuck, let's kick it up shall we? Time Bomb throws the railing past Hawks into the ceiling igniting several timers on the ceiling causing it to rain dust and dirt. Don't lose sight of your opponent. Hawks feathers picked up movement to his side as he brought off his feather blade in time to block Time Bomb's knife. That won't work. Time Bomb then grabbed Hawks arm bringing him down. Shit I don't have enough feathers to stay afloat with a passenger. Good, now hand to hand combat, said Time Bomb before spitting out a small rock that was hidden in his mouth. Since it was a small rock it didn't cause a big explosion but enough for Hawks to lose focus and fall to the ground. Shit Hawks quickly recovered and rolled to his feet but to his surprise so did Time Bomb, who followed up on the attack with quick jabs from his free hand and adding knife swipes when he saw an opening. With his training Hawks was able to either block or dodge each attack but wasn't able to counter. What the hell, this guy is trained like a soldier. Keep your head in the game and don't forget your footwork just because you can fly. Time Bomb swept Hawks legs but the winged hero didn't fall as he used his feathers to float back. What the hell is this? Asked Hawks as he clashed blades with the man. A lesson. The man just smiled at Hawks. Time to end this. Thought Hawks as he focused on one of his remaining feathers that were on the ground. I'll go for his leg. Going to try and hit my leg. Said Time Bomb smirking causing Hawks eyes to widen. Or did you forget I grabbed your coat when we fell? Hawks eyes went down to his arm where he saw four digits. 0.001. He turned my jacket into a bomb. I'm wearing a bomb. Hawks then grabbed Time Bomb and held him close. Go ahead. Make it a big one. Take us both down. Hawks. Hawks looked over to see Ant-Man holding an unconscious Dazzle. Stay back. This bastard turned my jacket into a bomb, but if he wants to pull the trigger he'll just take both of us down. Time Bum smiled. Not bad, it's been a while since I've had to really put my back into a fight. I'm rusty as hell, but at least it was you who took me down. Me. Hawks just stared at the man. Who the hell are you? You made me proud today, little bird. Hawks felt his blood freeze. Why? Oh as a young Hawks was hit to the ground again after a long session of training. Come on, little bird. You have to do better with close combat, said an older boy with a bow staff. If you want to roll with the big ones you got to learn to handle yourself. Hawks slow lifted himself up in a sitting position. I'm doing my best and all the adults are telling me to focus on my quirk. The boy spun his staff around. I admit you do have a kick-ass quirk, but you're never going to make it into the big leagues just by focusing on your quirk. Take Endeavor, for example, you think he got that big bulking body just by focusing on his quirk. Hawks thought about it, I guess not. See, all of the greats don't just rely on their quirk. Hell I'm pretty sure when they make her sidekick, she'll have me running through hand-to-hand -hand combat exercises all day, said the older boy with a grim expression. Well with your quirk that should be easy. Huh, what are you talking about? The older boy was clearly confused. Hawks pointed to his weapon. Your bow staff. Oh this has nothing to do with my quirk, said the boy. Now that I think about it, I don't think I've ever shown you my quirk. What? Then why are you always practicing with that thing? Asked Hawks. I see you practicing with that thing all the time. The older boy gave a small laugh before looking at his staff, well for one, it give me a good workout, and secondly, my hero used a staff like this. Your hero? Yeah, to be honest when I was younger than you I thought my quirk was the kind that a villain would use, but when my parents brought me to America to visit some relatives I saw footage of a hero who had a quirk similar to mine, he was so cool. The way he fought the way he talked, everything about him was just so cool. So you practice with a bow staff so you can be like your hero. The older boy nodded. Yeah, well that and I think it works well with my quirk. I hope when I become her psychic I can take up his name and be a hero like he was. Oh yeah, what was his name? The older boy smiled his name was. Hawk stared at the man in front of him. Gambit. Yeah, he smiled as he raised his hand. Keep flying, little bird. He then flicked Hawk's visor off of his face, using his quirk to make it explode above them. Time Bum used the distraction to kick Hawks away before running away. Wait stop, yelled Hawks as he sent his feathers at Time Bomb. Gambit. Time Bum dropped a coin that exploded and caused several lines of his fuse to ignite, one that quickly exploded making an opening in the wall to the outside. Keep flying, Hawks. Hawks was about to try and run after him but Ant-Man stopped him. We need to go now. As several parts of the warehouse started to explode. Come on. Ant-Man and Hawks turned and ran through the warehouse as it started to explode around them. They quickly jumped through the main doors as the warehouse collapsed behind them covering them in dust. Ant-Man, you okay? Asked Hawks as he coughed out the dust from his lungs. Yeah, I'm fine, as Izuku stood up and stretched, but what was that back there? This may have just gotten personal. Hawks stood up and dusted himself off. Hey, what happened to the other guy? Oh, I knocked him out and tied him. Freeze Ant-Man. The two turned to see several police officers pointing their guns at Ant-Man. Behind the officers, the two saw as they placed an unconscious dazzle in the back of police transport. Oh look they got him right over there. Oh, he dragged him out beforehand. Kind of. Knocked him out, tied him then more or less threw him outside with my aunt's keeping watch. Dude was surprisingly light, said Izuku as he started stepping backward. Anyway it seems you guys got it covered, I'm just going to head home now. Don't you dare move. For a moment Izuku thought one of the police had said that until he turned to see Endeavor's psychic Burnin standing right behind him. 
Don't even think about trying to escape. You're surrounded by police and endeavor sidekicks. As she grabbed Izuku's shoulder, make any sudden moves and I got permission to give you one hell of a burn. Izuku looked at the hand then at Burnin. Does she really think this is going to work? Nice work, Burnin. They all looked up to see Endeavor descending from the sky. I came here as soon as I heard. We have you now, Vigilante. I'm really starting to hate this guy, thought Izuku. Endeavor, hey buddy, said Hawk stepping between Ant-Man and Endeavor. I've wanted to talk to you, but I know we got other business at the moment so let's put a pin in that for now. As Hawks turned to Ant-Man and grabbed his free hand. Despite what this guy about to arrest you, it's been fun teaming up with you. Izuku felt something in his hand and gave a slow nod to Hawks. What is he doing? Now onto the important stuff here. As Hawks got serious. Vernon, you want to go on a date? Huh. Vernon blushed so hard that her flames turned pink. What now is not the time for a date. What are you talking about? I just caught a bad guy and survive a very tough opponent I think now is the perfect time to celebrate. Said Hawks as he wrapped one arm around Vernon. Come on what do you say? I, who? Vernon was so caught off guard she couldn't help but let go of Izuku. B-U-R-N-I-N. Don't let him escape yelled Endeavor as he lunged at Ant-Man. Bye Endeavor, see you later. As Izuku shrunk down and escaped. Endeavor looked around the ground before turning and glaring at Hawks. What the hell are you thinking? Hawks gave him a blank look for a moment, oh I'm sorry. He then turned to Burnin. Endeavor's right, I can't take you on a date like this. Huh, as everyone just stared at him. Look at me, I'm dusty and probably look like a mess. He started walking to the prison transport. Give me an hour or two to get cleaned up and I'll take you out to dinner tonight, my treat. Wait what? As Burnin's flames turned pink again. Endeavor marched after Hawks. Hold, we're not done yet. Sorry Endeavor duty calls, as Hawks jumped into the prison transport. I need to take this guy in, you can handle the rest right. As he shut the door, Hawks, above them sitting on a rooftop, Izuku couldn't help laugh at Endeavor getting pissed. Hawks you are now officially my favorite hero aside from All Might. Izuku then looked at the card Hawks gave him that had the hero's number on it. Maybe I will give you a call, I still have some questions about Time Bomb and if it's personal, I will definitely be seeing you again. Oh, Time Bum ran through the alley, clutching his side, stopping at the entrance before a van stopped in front of him as the door opened revealing the military woman he's been working with. Perfect timing combo. As Time Bum got in, wincing as he sat down. What the hell chewed you up? She asked. Hawks, he got be good, with two feathers as I ran. Time Bum felt his wounds. I ain't going to die but this is going to take a while to heal. Madam Aka won't be happy about that, said the soldier. What happened to the idiot? Oh Dazzle he got captured and I'm not going to rescue that idiot. He ain't worth the trouble. But he was getting on my nerves, asked Kamo as she started driving down the road. So what the plan now? Rest up for the moment, the trash pit has gotten quite loud recently. While our goal of killing Ant-Man shall remain the same, we have to be careful of the other heroes that are now running around the trash pit, said Time Bomb as he looked out the window and saw a payphone. The younger Time Bomb was running down the street in a hoodie trying to hide his face. He sat down at a bus stop to catch his breath for a moment even though it was the middle of the night and he was sure that no one was following him, he was still on edge. A sudden ringing got his attention as he turned to see an old payphone ringing. After a few rings, he stood up and answered the phone. Hello, Raji, stop running, you're only making things harder for yourself, said the voice of the new president of the Public Safety Commission. So you can kill me or lock me up as you did her, said Raji with anger. You told us we could be heroes, you said we could be symbols of hope and protectors for others' heroes. You lied to us, you used us like tools and after everything we did you stabbed us in the back and told everyone we're criminals even though we were just doing what we were told. The president sighed. Yes we did, we pushed you all too far and it got my predecessor killed. I admit what we did was absolutely wrong but we can't change the past, we can only do better moving forward. Turn yourself in and I promise you a light sentence of five years, you'll even be able to have visitations if you promise to not tell anyone. Bullshit. That's a load of bullshit. Yelled Raji as he punched the side of the payphone. I'm sorry but that's the best I can offer. Even if you go public with your knowledge it won't do you any good. We've already scrubbed you from our records and your parents will be deported if you do so. They may have raised you here but all of you are also American citizens. Fuck. Raji, just come back. There's is no place you can run that we won't find you, she said with sincerity in her voice. Raji closed his eyes for a moment before finding his resolve. You're right there is no place for me to hide, but there is one place I can go where you can't catch me. The woman was silent for a moment. You wouldn't dare. You've known about that hell pit for years but been too afraid of what would happen if it spilled over to the rest of the country. Raji listens to me. If you take a single step into that place you will become a prisoner in hell on earth. Please don't do it. You'll be throwing your life away. Pleaded the president. Isn't it your dream to be a hero? You people destroyed that dream a long time ago. Raji, I'm done listening to you. As he walked away from the payphone as it blew up, not looking back. That sounds like a smart move. We can't be reckless, said Kamo getting his attention. No, we can't, said Time Bomb as he noticed something. What is that? Kamo followed his eyes, that shouldn't be here. Oh, Sarah flipped the card in her hand, so Hawks just gave you this before giving you a chance to escape. Hannah looked at the card over her shoulder. This can't be tracked, can it? 
I don't think so, said Izuku from his computer room at the Ant Hill. It was located right above the garage. I gave it a look over and there nothing on that can be tracked. I even had my ants check it if it had a unique scent but I found nothing. So does this mean we're working with hawks? Asked Hannah. No, said Izuku quickly. If he didn't act weird near the head of that fight then maybe I would have agreed to work with him, but now until I know who Gambit is, that ain't happening. Is that what you've been looking at? Asked Sarah. Yeah, take a look. As Izuku showed them several pictures. This is an old American hero, named Gambit. I surprisingly can't find out a lot about his early career or schooling, but apparently he worked with a few American teams. He died almost two decades ago. So he can't be Time Bomb, stated Hannah. So how does an old American hero have anything to do with Time Bomb and Hawks? No idea, admitted Izuku. That's why I'm a bit iffy about working with him, but I am willing to hear him out. He stuck his neck out for me today, and that is worth something in my book. We that's good to at least know we have one ally in the hero community, said Sarah looking at the positives. That aside, there's something else we need to talk about, said Hannah getting serious. What did that little girl and you talk about today outside of the ramen shop? Izuku frowned before grumbling. Oh, that. Izuku then sighed. It was a job request from Izuku. Huh. The three looked out the window to see someone enter the garage. Kenta. Izuku walked to the garage with the girls. Kenta, what's going on? Why are you freaking out? He's freaking out because we got a problem. Yelled Genta as he and Benta ran into the garage breathing heavy. Oh shit man, you can run Kenta. Benta was breathing hard, my lungs feel like they're on fire. I told you I've been working out, said Kenta with pride. Guys what the heck is going on? Asked Izuku as he was now on alert. Is someone after you guys? No, said Genta. America is after you. What? Benta stepped forward, shoving the RC controller in his face. Take a look at the video we got. Izuku took the controller and ran back to the computer room, plugging the controller in and playing the video. What is this? Asked Sarah. Two guys in a van, said Hannah. Shush, listen, said Genta as the video played at the beginning. Izuku listened to the first part. These guys are from my island and they are looking for me. Keep watching man, it's about to get to the crazy part, said Kenta. After that Izuku turned up the volume of the video as the two men got a video call from a man Izuku knew well, David Shield. Have you two found anything about Ant-Man? Asked David Shield. No sir, said one of the men. Me and Jeff have been looking for a while but we can't pick up a trail. He's been jumping all around this place, shrinking and growing a lot of things, said the one named Jeff. We can't get anything. David Shield frowned at the information. I expected as much but it is imperative you two find some way that will lead us to Ant-Man. That technology is key to solving some of the world's biggest problems. Medical, technological, it could even solve world hunger. The two men looked at each other. Sir, is that the only reason? Yeah, we're both scientists, sir. Why did you send both me and Travis to Japan? Asked Jeff. Why not just contact All Might? I'm sure he would have plenty of friends to track down one guy. David looked conflicted for a moment. I'm sorry, I sent you to another country without telling you just how much this would affect the world. The world. You see one of the reasons that suit was buried was not only how much power it had on its own but the mysterious power behind it. The Pym particles are so revolutionary. Its founder Hank Pym didn't want anyone to have it unless they could figure it out on their own. It is why the formula for the particles was the passcode for his computer. No one knows what was on that device. No matter who we asked or what quirk they had, no one could get into the computer or copy its data. That's why it has been a rumor that Dr. Pym figured out a way to control people's quirks or cancel them. With the recent news we can confirm now without a doubt that Pym particles can somehow manipulate other people's quirks. Explained David Shield shocking everyone. Wait, are you saying that Ant-Man can take quirks away? Asked Travis. I'm saying that whoever Ant-Man is right now has a hundred terabyte computer with the knowledge to change the world as we know it. He may very well have the power to take, change and alter any quirk he so chooses. Explained David part of me prays that the only reason he can make that suit work is because he has some strange quirk that allows him to use it. Wait then sir, shouldn't we really tell All Might? Asked Jeff. If Ant-Man is so dangerous then shouldn't we report this? No. David shot back immediately. The more people that know about this the more dangerous the situation will become. The fewer people that know about this the better. Right now Ant-Man is just using the suit to be a hero. I don't believe he understands the value of what he has right now. If you find him first talk to him. If he gets caught first I'll call All Might. Who sir? Travis raised his hand. What happens if we're attacked? Well you two both have extremely powerful offensive quirks but if you feel that you are in any danger, here is the emergency number for All Might. As a series of numbers flashed along with the screen. Call him and say you're on a job for David and he'll come running. Jeff wrote down the number on a notepad and held it as if it were gold. Please, don't use it unless it's an emergency. I don't want to hear from All Might that two of my top scientists used the emergency line for an autograph. Izuku paused the video. Does dot 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 um dot 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 does he say anything else important? The three wombats looked at each other for a moment. No that's about it. Good cause I'm about to freak out. Izuku then took a massive deep breath. Hannah and Sarah looked slightly alarmed. Izuku, Izuku calm down deep breaths, okay. Yeah, didn't you already figure a lot of that stuff out before? Sarah pointed out. We kind of already knew some of this stuff. 
I have All Might's number. Both Hannah and Sarah froze. What? Kenta was the first one to unfreeze. Oh yeah, I forgot how much of an All Might fanboy you were. This caused Jenna to face bomb and Benta to hold in a laugh. Izuku scratched the back of his head. What can I say old habits die hard. Both Hannah and Sarah raised their fists before bopping Izuku on the head. Don't scare us like that. Sorry, said Izuku as he rubbed his head. Yeah, but I kind of suspected that much from when we tried to shrink all of you guys. He then turned to the corner of the room where an ant farm was. Inside was Hank Pym's laptop being guarded and cleaned by a horde of ants. Every time I go through that laptop I find more formulas than answers. Research notes that I barely understand. He was truly a genius. His knowledge could change the world and then some. Why not call Meg? asked Kenta. Doesn't she already know about the formula? Can't she figure the rest of it out? Izuku slowly shook his head. No, there's a limit to her quirk and she doesn't remember the formula. I checked up on her in Yamada not too long ago. Apparently using her quirk on the formula alone was enough to keep her bedridden for days and she doesn't remember the formula at all. Her quirk might help her figure it out but it also and I'm quoting her here, shove a rusty knife into her skull and drill her brain out sideways. Translation it hurts a lot to the point that it affects her physically afterward. If I ask her to figure out the formulas or any of the other notes on the laptop it might make her comatose, explained Izuku. Not to mention I don't want to put them in any more danger and I want to figure it out on my own. Now that I know this was all done so that no one but someone who can understand Hank Pym's research can get in, I want to live up to that. Unlock the secrets that probably no one but Hank Pym has. Izuku, that's nice and all but that doesn't change the fact we got scientists from my island on our ass now, pointed out Genta. That's the least of our worries, as Izuku then explained to everyone his day. The others were silent as they just stared at Izuku. We got Turk asking for our help and to top it off, Time Bomb is back and has some weird connection to Hawks. Yep. Jenna sighed before grabbing the RC car off the table and grabbing Benta. Kenta meet us in the gym, time to get serious. Okay, said Kenta before turning to Izuku. Meeting adjourned I guess. Izuku nodded. Okay, then I'll work with the guys and get back to you. Thanks and tell Jenna I'm going to make his car as a priority, Izuku yelled at Kenta as he left. Those came through today. We now know others after us and we got All Might's number for emergencies. Yeah, they sure did, so what now? Asked Hannah. Well, I need to go talk to my mom right now, said Izuku as he got ready to leave. Need to calm her down about working with Turk again. Sarah gave Izuku a small smile. I'm guessing she has issues with you working with a notorious gang leader. Not at all, said Izuku before trying to look on the bright side. But it does give me a good excuse if I ever need to head somewhere to be Ant-Man. Well, good luck, said Hannah before catching Izuku off guard and kissing him on the lips. Hannah then released Izuku as he looked at her in utter shock. Who? My turn, said Sarah as she kissed Izuku as well making his brain go blank. She then let him go giving him a warm smile. Well, don't just stand there, go talk to your mom. Izuku was a statue for a moment before turning to the door. Right dot 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 cool dot 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 cool cool cool. He muttered as he left to go talk to his mom along the way his brain and froze leaving him one question. What just happened? Chapter 12 School and Love Talk that was too easy, thought Izuku as he walked out of the testing all of Mustafar University. Izuku had gone in to do the final test he needed to do to skip high school and head straight into college. Though now with this out of the way, it shouldn't be too hard to get a lab and mimic the Ant-Man tech and make it legitimate. Now I just need to make sure I don't get caught until school starts. Izuku thought as he felt his phone buzz slightly and saw that his mother was calling him. Hey, mom. Hey Izuku, so how'd it go? Asked Inko somewhat excited. I think I am officially a college student, said Izuku with confidence. Well as much as I believe in you, you really shouldn't rush these things, you never know, warned Inko. As this happened Izuku felt another buzz on his spare phone that he used for his aunt Cam. He quickly turned it on and saw two professors talking. He quickly hit a button that turned their speech into text. Well, it looks like Izuku Midoriya passed. You sure? I was told to run his first into the computer the second we got it back and he scored with a 91% and that's before checking the written portion which worse come to worse will bring his score down to 86% or might even raise his score to 95%. In either case he passed the 85% threshold to pass. Izuku. Izuku, you still there? Asked his mother. Oh yeah, I'm here, mom, said Izuku as he put away his other phone. And mom I'm pretty confident that I passed. Well in any case I'm just happy to hear that you're doing better, you've been pretty out of it for the past few days, said Inko reminding Izuku of his little encounter with the girls. Did something happen? Nope, nothing, Izuku said quickly a little too quickly. Inko who was in the back of the ramen shop glanced at Hannah and Sarah for a moment. Izuku, I have caught you coming back from spying on gangsters, villains, even crazy CEOs. You have never acted like this before. Izuku couldn't deny that he's put himself in life or death situations before and none of those loomed over him for so long. But two girls on the other hand have thrown him off more than he could imagine and he didn't know what to do about it. It's nothing mom really. And Ko cited, I know you're lying but I'll leave this be for now but you better make sure your butt is in gear. A lot is happening around here and it's going to bite you in the ass if you're not careful. Yeah, I know. Trust me I know, said Izuku. I'll see you when I get home. Take your time, said Inko. 
Explore your new campus. Sure, said Izuku as he ended the call with a sinking feeling in his gut. I really need to figure this out soon or a villain is going to get the best of me. As if on cue Izuku felt something hit him, causing him to fall down with several loose papers falling around him. What the? Came a teenage voice. Izuku turned to see an older high school boy with white hair looking at him. I am so sorry, said the teenager as he quickly bent down and helped Izuku up. I am so sorry, totally my fault, I wasn't paying attention. It's all good, it's all good, said Izuku as he tried to calm him down. Izuku then looked down and noticed the papers and grabbed them while giving them a quick glance. Here, by the way, the second problem is incorrect. You forgot to carry the two and use the area of the triangle to solve the question. As Izuku started walking off, the teenager quickly double-checked the paper and brought out another with the answer sheet. He's right, he quickly ran after Izuku. Hey wait a minute, wait up. HM. Izuku looked at the older boy. Yes, how did you know how to solve the question with a single glance? Oh, I just got done solving a similar question during the test. Test. Wait are you here for the practice test as well? Asked the boy. Oh no, I came here for the real one, said Izuku shocking the boy. I'm smart. A brain quirk, said the boy before getting on his hand and knees. Please you got to help me and my friends. Huh. Izuku blinked for a moment. Buddy, I have no idea who you are and I got a lot on my plate so I don't really have the time. I'll pay you. Izuku sighed as he rubbed his face. Okay for starters, how about you tell me your name? Oh my name is Natsu Todoroki. Todoroki? Izuku blinked for a moment. That name sounds familiar. Where have I heard that name before? Izuku looked at the older teenager. Okay, my name is Izuku Midoriya. Hi Izuku, said Natsu as he stood back up. So can you please help me out? For starters, why are you so desperate? Izuku asked. Desperate? You just dropped down on your hands and feet begging me to help you, so there's got to be a story behind that. Izuku's words made Natsu nervous. Look either you give me a good story or I'm walking. It's a bit of a long story, muttered Natsu. You don't have to tell me everything and I got time, said Izuku. Okay, let's find some place to sit down. Oh, yes sir, he just woke, said the officer as he followed the hero hawks. We were about to transfer him to the prison. Okay, just give me a minute, I just need to talk to him real quick, said hawks as he gave the officer a warm smile. The officer looked nervous. Um sir, we were given orders to not let anyone speak with him until he is at the prison. Don't worry about it, it will only take a sec, said Hawks as he walked past the guard standing by the door, who looked conflicted about letting in Hawks but didn't have time to react as he opened the door and quickly closed it behind him. Wow, I guess you hitting one of their prison transports really pissed them off. He said to Dazzle who was strapped down to a medical table with his feet in specialized boots that prevented the use of his quirk. All standard issue but one thing, an electric collar, huh. As Hawks spotted the collar around his neck preventing him from speaking. Hawks' eyes wandered upward as he saw the cameras in the room. Now that's a little excessive, but not too expensive. As he used his feathers to block the camera footage and then sent one at Dazzle's neck breaking the electric collar, there you go, now let's talk. Dazzle slowly twisted his neck as he stretched for a moment before glaring at Hawks. How dare you, me, see a feather embedded his pillow right next to his head, clearly saying I can and will kill you and Hawks' dead glare was enough to back it up. So what did you want to talk about? Let's start with your boss, shall we? Said Hawks as he sat down in the other chair in the room, who do you work for? Dazzle looked at Hawks for a moment before forgetting all of the fear that the man just put into him and started laughing. Are joking? Do you think it would be that easy? I would just spill my guts without a second thought. The people I work for have kept this entire town a secret for decades and I'm not suicidal. We could protect you. No you can't. There's a reason why that the trash pit was a secret for so long. Why do you think they put all this security around little old me? Because they know that if I talk or speak I'm the one that's going to die. Someone is either going to get bribed to kill me or one of the shadows will kill me. So what can you tell me? Nothing, only that you're fucked if you try anything. You'll just die and become trash like everybody else, said Dazzle who was already done with the conversation. Hawks hummed for a moment, well damn that sucks and I wanted to kick Time Bum's ass. Time Bum, said Dazzle now paying attention, that fuckhead is not my boss he's a traitorous scumbag. Wow you must really hate the guy, if you have anything to say to him I'd happily pass it along, said Hawks putting on a charismatic smile. I just need to find him is all. Good luck with that. While I hate to admit it he's good, prepared for every scenario, I wouldn't be surprised if he was trained by someone. He's probably found a new place to be his hideout, but I do know what he's after, said Dazzle with a smile. Hawks now felt like he was getting somewhere. Oh, and what might that be? Ant-Man. Oh, so let me get this straight. You need help to raise you and your friend's grades so all of you can get into the same school because you screwed up and listened to your dick and followed your crush here, said Izuku as he and Natsu sat down at the outdoor table. Natsu blushed bright red, hey I wouldn't say I followed my dick, I met her at the first practice test and I really like her. Natsu's face then returned to normal, but I agreed with my friends that we would all try and get into the same school together. But you're all dumb as bricks. Natsu gave Izuku a look. Why do you need to put it like that? I know I'm exaggerating a little but am I wrong? Natsu hung his head, no. I know if I focused I could get in no problem but my friends on the other hand are struggling a bit and are too stubborn to ask for help. Izuku thought over the information quickly. So all of you are related to heroes aren't you? Natsu looked up in surprise. 
You came to me for help which means all of you are willing to accept help but not from teachers or regular tutors. You guys are trying to get into the regular college of the city so either you guys are struggling from the streets or you want to try and get into this school on your own and you don't look poor. In fact, you give off rich kid vibes. So that left me with one answer one of your parents is famous and you got into high school by their name alone, similar with your friends. They must also be related to famous people as well and you're all trying to get into average Joe school to prove to yourselves you can make it on your own in the real world without relying on. Let me guess dear old dad. Natsu looked down at the table, yeah, my dad is famous and for a while, I have been trying to step out on my own which isn't hard, he ignores everything I do, to be honest, I have pretty much been on my own for years. It helped inspire my friends, we all go to a private academy currently and our names alone have gotten us scholarships for big universities but when I refused the scholarships they did as well. Because they realized by watching you that they have nothing but a name to back them up, concluded Izuku with Natsu confirming him. Izuku let out a big sigh, I'm pretty busy at the moment but I'm not opposed to the idea. I have no problem helping tutor others. Currently, I've been tutoring a few others that live in my apartment complex. If money is the issue, we can pay you, offered Natsu. Izuku eyed the older teenager, look I'll think about it but before I agree to anything, I'm going to need to know who your parents are, I need to make sure I'm not stepping on anyone's toes. Stepping on their toes, repeated Natsu slightly confused, before saying who his father was. My dad is Endeavor. Izuku had to force himself from looking utterly shocked. This guy is Endeavor's kid, now those are some big toes I could be stepping on dot 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 or mess with. Izuku cleared his throat. Well damn wasn't expecting that. Yeah not many people do, said Natsu as his eyes darkened. Okay there's something there, Izuku thought as he noticed how Natsu's demeanor changed at the mere thought of his father. Izuku shrugged it off for a moment and brought out his phone. Here let's exchange numbers. I'll think about it and get back to you whether or not I can help. I'm currently doing my own thing but if I can make the time, I don't mind helping you guys for a small price. Natsu took out his phone and exchanged numbers. Thanks. Izuku stood up. No problem. I'm more than happy to help you out but don't expect me to be able to help you out with whatever issues you have with your family. Natsu gave a dry laugh, yeah there aren't many other people who have the same problem I have, I would love to compare notes. Izuku paused, wait what was that? Oh well, I was just saying if someone had a similar problem as me or knows something similar I would love to meet and talk to them. Izuku stood there thinking for a moment as it gave him an idea, but his lack of words or movement made Natsu slightly worried. Uh, you okay? Izuku looked at Natsu as he came back to reality, yeah, in fact, you might have helped me with another problem of mine. He said before he quickly ran off. Izuku found a well-hidden area before quickly changing into his Ant-Man suit and summoning an ant to fly him back to the trash pit. Oh, Izuku landed in an alley before changing out of his suit and quickly running down the street where he found the people he was looking for, but to his surprise, they were loading boxes into a truck. Are you two moving? A tall man with green skin and small horns on his head turned to him, Izuku, said Yamada. A girl with blonde hair looked over, oh hey Izuku, long time no see, greeted Meg. Hey, long time no see to you guys as well, so what's all this about? as Izuku gestured to the truck and the boxes. We're moving, said Meg happily, we got green light for a new apartment across town. Yamada puffed his chest out, and I got a new job as a security guard at a fancy hotel. Wow so you guys are finally getting out of here, said Izuku happy they were moving on. Yep, though we'll definitely come back for the ramen, said Meg with a smile as she thought of some good ramen. Mr. Ramen's ramen is still the best. Maybe we should grab some before we take this stuff to the new place, suggested Yamada. Um actually can you guys put a pin in that for now, asked Izuku. I actually stopped by because I need some help. Yamada then immediately locked the truck before standing straight and slapping his chest. Say the word Izuku, you saved Meg, I owe you, what do you need? Actually Yamada, I just came to talk to Meg. Me, Meg pointed to herself in surprise. Oh if this is about my quirk I haven't exactly been studying. No, I actually, well, I need you for some. Dating advice, he said sheepishly. Yamada and Meg both looked at Izuku before blinking and then looking at each other. Look I need your perspective on this since you're kind of the only other person here who was born outside of the pit. Oh dot 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 oh h h h, as Meg realized what he was asking. One sec, let me grab my purse and we can grab some coffee. Oh, soon Izuku found himself and Meg sitting down have some coffee at a small cafe just outside the trash pit. So, how's your head doing? Asked Izuku. Not bad. For the first few days it hurt like a bitch. Couldn't get out of bed and it made everything really fuzzy. Luckily Yamato was there to help take care of me, explained Meg. Do you even remember anything that happened that day? Meg shook her head. Not really. All I remember was meeting that guy and activating my quirk after that. Just the feeling of my skull getting bashed in by a sludge hammer, and somewhere in the middle of it you helped me back home. She then rubbed her head as she remembered the pain. But that's not what you wanted to talk about. Izuku slowly shook his head, you know Sarah and Hannah. The he sisters. Yeah, they both kissed me, said Izuku plainly. No shit huh? Wow, now that's something, said Meg as she thought it over. So what's stopping you? Izuku stared at Meg for a second, well for one we're all kids. No you're not, said Meg, quickly shooting down his argument. 
You have been doing shit that would make grown men shit themselves. You're far mature than everyone else your age. In this scenario, they are younger than you. Meg paused for a second to take a sip of her coffee but made sure to raise her hand to stop Izuku from responding. Oh, that's good stuff. Now where was I? Right you. The kid that has some CEOs by the damn balls. You were one of the few people that were actually able to pay off your debt through ligament means. You and your big-ass brain could make more money than anyone here. You can afford it now more than ever. Not to mention odd relationships aren't uncommon in the trash pit. Izuku looked at her in shock for a moment. Wait, are you telling me to go for it? Meg thought for a moment. Yeah, you're a great guy. Much better than almost everyone in the pit. I know you will treat them right. Face it, the whole reason you came to me was that the only real thing we have in common is that we're both born outside of the trash pit. Izuku sighed. Yeah, and that's why. It's crazy. Interrupted Meg. It's crazy cause a part of you is telling you that you aren't from the pit. You were born outside of it. I was born in America, one fuck up and I try running to Japan only to get scammed into the pit, if it wasn't for Yamada I would have been screwed. He was one of the only men there trying to make an honest living and his family got tossed to the pit before he was born cause his dad was the leader of the Red Ogre Gang. He survived and lived an honest life despite the rules of the trash pit, people like that don't live long, but he did and so did you. What are you getting at? The trash pit rules are much different than the rules of everywhere else. For example, what is the legal age for an adult? 18. Izuku. Snapped Meg not happy with him dodging the answer. The trash pit rules don't exist anymore. Now kids don't have to be adults when they turn 13. Okay a few months ago, yes, but now the trash pit is going away. Those rules don't apply anymore. Do you really honestly believe that? Asked Meg with a serious face. The rules of the trash pit still exist. Because we still exist, Izuku. No matter where we go people will remind us of where we came from. No matter what university you go to, they will know that you came from the hell pit. The same goes for me, Yamada, Hannah, Sarah, even your own mother. We're all from the pit. Meg stopped to give Izuku a chance to think over her words. Though I will not lie things are changing. Back a few months ago if this happened I would have told you immediately would have told you to date both of them to just protect them. Back then the only protection you would have would be if you were a child and the church would protect you until you were 13 unless you, of course, crossed a gang. But now there are heroes and Ant-Man protecting us. Actual real heroes that aren't our jailers. None of that will change everything overnight. None of that will change us that quickly. None of that will change the big question now. As she locked eyes with Izuku. Do you care for them? Izuku thought for a moment as he went back to his life now hanging out with them, helping them with their homework. Then he imagined his life would be like without them, and it gave him an empty feeling in his stomach, I don't want to lose either of them. Then don't. If there's one thing I've to learn from living here, is that you have to keep the ones you love as close as possible. Said Meg as she took a second to sip her drink. So what do you think brought all this on? I mean why did they suddenly kiss you? Izuku groaned, well it most likely had something to do with the fact I was talking to this girl I kind of saved. Meg's eyebrows went up, you were flirting with another girl. I wasn't flirting, we were just talking at the ramen shop. Was she flirting? Izuku was silent for a moment, no, I don't think so, but I did agree to help her get into UA. That would do it, said Meg. So what are you going to do about the new girl? Achako, I have no idea, said Izuku, but I need to talk to Sarah and Hannah first. I suggest you do that sooner rather than later. Izuku nodded, yeah, thanks for the advice and the talk. Don't mention it, I owe you a lot, if you need anything else just say the word. Said Meg as she got up and started to leave, and don't be afraid to visit us. Thanks, I will and tell Yamada I said good luck on the new job. Said Izuku before he took a deep breath and took out his phone, time to make the call. Oh, do you think we screwed up? Asked Hannah as she and her sister were walking home from getting food. He hasn't really said anything to us in the past few days. Sarah grumbled a little before she started getting annoyed. He should at least say something to us. Sarah was getting annoyed. She wasn't expecting Izuku to act like this. She was more or less expecting him to be ecstatic about dating them, but instead, he was acting weird. Any normal guy from the pit would just jump right on board. Izuku isn't a normal guy you know. Pointed out Hannah. Yeah, you're right, said Sarah slightly defeated, before stopping. Did you hear that? Hear what? Asked Hannah before they heard a scream. Okay, I heard that. Come on, said Sarah as she ran off into the alleyway. In the alleyway two men cornered a woman. Now now, sheep, come on back nice and easy, said one of the men. Trust me when I tell you, I will die before I go back there, said the girl with the sheep horns on her head. Come on let's just grab her, said the other one. Hey assholes. One of them turned in time to see Sarah slam a metal baton collide into his face. Eat shit. What the hell, said the one who wasn't hit. What a minute you were the last girl that was brought in. Huh, Sarah looked at the guy, you're one of the sex traffickers. She then looked at the girl, you. Oh hey the new girl, said the girl with the horns look out. Sarah didn't have time to react as an elongated arm stretched out and grabbed her by the hair. That hurt you damn bitch, said the man on the ground as he had one hand on his head. Let go of my sister, yelled Hannah as she rushed forward with her own baton. The other man stepped forward attempting to block her, out of my way. Hannah's hair then brightened quickly as her hair shined so bright it blinded everyone like a flashbang. Hannah was also blinded but quickly adjusted her aim low, since the man used his arms to cover his eyes he left his lower region vulnerable. His loud high-pitched scream was proof enough that she hit her mark. Hannah's hair calmed down to a regular shade of yellow, let go of my sister now. 
The man with the long arms saw his partner was down, you bitch. You heard my sister, said Sarah as her hair turned bright red. Let go of my hair. As her hair ignited on fire burning the man's hand. Ah, oh, my hand, yelled the man as he let go giving Sarah a chance to hit him in the face once more with her baton. Stop hitting my face. Then you should take a nap, said the sheep girl who was standing behind him with a loose brick raised above her head that she quickly shattered over the man's head, knocking the man out. Thanks for the assist. Sarah touched her hair making sure it wasn't still on fire and that her hair was still there. Yeah, no problem. Uh, we never actually introduced myself, named Sarah. I'm Hannah, as she introduced herself while walking up to the other girl. Are you okay? Oh yeah, I'm fine. Name's Yuruji, said the sheep horn girl. I don't give a shit. The three turned to see the man Hannah had hit between the legs was getting up and his arms were changing into large wrecking balls. I don't give a shit about the pay now, I'm going to smash your faces in, said the man unaware that someone was walking up to him from behind, you all better start prayer cause I'm about tea. He wasn't able to finish as a combat boot hit him right in the face slamming it hard against the alley wall. The three were stunned as they saw a woman with long dark black hair wearing a thick army jacket and black camo pants. Well that was awesome, said Hannah who was impressed by the woman's display. The woman then gave her a look before quickly walking up to the girl and getting uncomfortably close. Ah, uh, what are you doing? The woman then closed her eyes and then started sniffing the air. Ah, uh, what is she doing? Asked Yoruji. I have no idea, said Sarah before the woman switched to her and started sniffing in front of her. Okay this is weird. Kazuri. They all looked to see a new girl walking into the alleyway wearing a similar camo jacket and combat boots, with a yellow bandana around her neck. She had short black hair with a red visor sunglasses on her head. What are you doing? Kazuri gave her a look before closing her eyes and sniffing again at the girls. Oh, is she your friend? Asked Hannah. Why is she sniffing us? Yeah, sorry she does that. Oh, did you guys have anything unique to eat? Asked the new girl. Well me and my sister just got back from having lunch, said Sarah, so she might be smelling the sandwiches or maybe the ramen from yesterday. Kazuri's eyes shot open at that before turning and walking away. Her friend stumbled a little at the sudden change, Kazuri. Kazuri hey wait up a minute, said the other girl as she ran after her friend. What was that about? Asked Yoroji. I have no idea, said Hannah, but she at least helped us with this guy. As Sarah poked the knocked out man with her baton, yeah this guy is out cold. What do we do with them? Asked Yoroji. Call the police, suggested Hannah as she pulled out her phone which caused a weird moment of silence. Oh yeah we can do that now, said Yoroji somewhat surprised before laughing. Man so many things have changed around here, it's actually kind of ridiculous. Yeah no kidding, said Sarah. So what have you been up to now that you're free? Been working, said Yoroji. Been working at a second furniture store in town. We have a furniture store, said Sarah surprised. Yuriji nodded. Yep, a friend of mine opened it not long after Ant-Man saved us. She hired me and several of the girls that were down there with me. As she pulled a small business card out of her pocket. Here, come and check it out when you can. We'll cut you a good deal and we'll keep you safe in case these morons try to get you. As she gestured to the two on the ground. Thanks. As Sarah took the card before looking at the two guys. So let me guess they're trying to recapture us. The horn girl nodded. Yep, it looks like the big guy in charge is pissed that we got away. You're not talking about Shirio, are you? Nope. Believe it or not, there was someone much higher than him in charge. The one who would give out the red tags is one of them. Now those people are the ones you avoid. Noted, said Sarah before her sister started to tap her shoulder. What did you call the police? Hannah shook her head. No, it's Izuku. Hey, who's that? Asked Yoroji. Your boyfriend. The two girls blushed slightly. I'll take that as a yes. They both looked at the woman. Hey don't mind me, none of my business and I'm not exactly looking for a guy right now, well unless it was Ant-Man of course. That didn't make the sisters feel any better. Sarah took the phone from Hannah, hey Izuku, Sarah are you okay? Was the first thing he asked which causing her to get a warm feeling in her chest. Yeah, me and Hannah are fine. Hannah leaned towards the phone I told you we are okay. As Sarah put the phone between the two of them. I know Hannah but when you told me you two got into a fight I got worried, said Izuku. I have already alerted the police there on the way and I already have some ants nearby to make sure those two don't go anywhere. Wow you work quick, said Sarah impressed. Yeah, um, can you and Hannah hear me because I want to talk to both of you in person, asked Izuku. Sure, said Hannah quickly. We can meet you on the way to the end of the hangout. She corrected herself as she realized someone else was there. Great, I'll see you guys there. See you there Izuku, said Sarah as she hung up the phone and handed it back to her sister. Hey, Yoruji, Yoruji, repeated Sarah as she saw that the girl was lost in thought. Ah, uh, oh sorry, are you done with your phone call, said Yuriji. I was just wondering, who were those girls in the camo jackets? I've never seen any group wearing those. Now that you mention it, as Hannah looked at the guy the one girl kicked. That kick wasn't normal. Who are they? Asked Sarah. Oh, hey Kazuri, where are you going? Asked the girl as she continued to follow her friend. Look, if you keep wandering around like this then I'm just going to leave. Julie, said Kazuri before pointing out in front of her, ramen. Julie looked out and saw the store, Mr. Ramen's ramen. What the hell does it have to do with anything? Kazuri then turned and started walking away again. Come, we must tell the boss. What? Oh, Izuku, Sarah, and Hannah made their way back to the anthill. I'm happy you two are okay. 
Oh, you don't need to worry about us, said Hannah. We did say that we can take care of ourselves. No one's taking either of us. Yeah, said Sarah as she held her hair. But it's strange, I was able to set my hair on fire. And Hannah, your hair shined like a searchlight. That's new, that's never happened to us before. Izuku thought it over for a moment. It's most likely an effect of the pin particles. They might be making your quirks evolve. Really, I never thought something like this could happen. I guess we should start working on our quirks, suggested Hannah. Izuku opened the door to the anthill. We can work something out but before that, I kind of want to show you guys something. The two girls followed him upstairs to the room that Izuku had claimed as his own. Izuku opened the door to reveal a room that was mostly bare inside as the bed had been lifted and leaned against the wall and all other furniture was pushed to the corner except a table with several objects and models on it and a giant box in the middle of the room that got the sisters' attention. What is that? An elevator, as Izuku hit a button on the side of the box, opening it before gesturing them both inside. Come on. As all of them got inside, once inside, Izuku hit the button for the second floor, going down, as the elevator activated, shrinking down in size with them as well. When they had stopped shrinking, Izuku hit another button on the panel that opened up several windows outside the elevators that showed the outside, as the whole world was bigger now that they were small and moving sideways to the table. Welcome back to the world of the small. The elevator then stopped as it made it to the table, the elevator opened up showing a model house. The sisters stood in awe as they saw that the model on the table they saw was now a full-sized mansion. Oh wow, Izuku did you make this? Asked Hannah. Oh no, said Izuku as he lead them to the house. I kind of stole this on a job a few months ago. A guy had me follow his wife to get evidence that she was sleeping with his son's teacher. This was actually the prototype to the son's school project, a fully functional model mansion. He couldn't get the wiring right but he got the plumping down. As Izuku opened the door to the mansion, Though he didn't really finish the inside. Inside the mansion was pretty bare with almost nothing inside but a bunch of knick-knacks, like a button or Legos in various positions as markers for other objects to be placed later. Wow, it's still nice, said Hannah as she looked around. Sarah was also poking her head around as she saw the kitchen and decided to test the faucet, whoa the waterworks, before she put her hand over the water as she noticed that the water felt different at the tiny size. This kind of feels weird like I can feel each droplet but it's warm. Yeah, said Izuku as he went over and flipped a switch on the wall. I added in the wiring to make the electricity and heat work. So this place does have lights and hot water. It was good practice for working at this size. Whoa, just out of curiosity did the kid win the contest? Asked Hannah. Oh no, the contest was cancelled after a pink hair girl's homemade arc reactor started going off and blew off the roof of the gymnasium, explained Izuku. Though it did give me a chance to slip away. You know even before you became Ant-Man, your life was pretty crazy, even by trash pit standards, said Sarah. Yeah, said Izuku as he started walking up the stairs with the girls following him. Ever since we set up shop here, this has been where I've been crashing. As he opened the door revealing a master bedroom with almost nothing inside but a big bed, a table, and a small dresser with some clothes inside. It's not much, I only really use it for sleeping. As he then sat down on the bed. Well it's more than what we got in our rooms, said Hannah. Yeah the most I got is some workout gear and a change of regular clothes, said Sarah. Maybe we should steal more furniture from the next gang. Ooh, and if we don't like what we steal we can just sell it to Yuruji. Izuku chuckled. Well, either way, feel free to decorate this place as you please. Both sisters looked surprised for a second. Wait do you mean? Izuku nodded. Yeah, I care about you both way too much. When you told me you both were in a fight I was scared. Even when you told me you both were okay, I was still worried about you too. I know you guys can take care of yourselves and today proved that but it defiantly made some things clear to me. So if you guys still want, I don't know how well it will go and we all have responsibilities, but I want to be with both of you. The next thing Izuku knew he was tackled to the bed as both girls hugged him on either side. So is that a yes? Of course, it is you, dummy, said Hannah as she kissed his cheek. Me and Hannah talked about it shortly after you helped us get jobs. We both realized that we have feelings for you and we also understand that between Ant-Man and work that you're busy but we can figure some way to make this work. Together, reassured Sarah as her hair turned pink. Hannah's hair then started to turn pink as well. We're here for you, Izuku and you won't be getting rid of us anytime soon. Izuku smiled and pulled them both closer to him as they rested their heads on his shoulders. I love you both. Oh, Kenta, Genta, and Benta walked into the Ant Hill's garage door. Izuku and the girls saw them through the office window, before heading down to greet them. Hey, guys. Izuku, what up? said Kenta. You called man. I did. Whatcha need? asked Genta. I need Benta, said Izuku getting the bi-spectacled man's attention. For an undercover mission. Me. As Benta pointed to himself in surprise. Cool, I get to go on a cool secret spy mission. What? Why does he get to go on a super secret spy mission? Asked Kenta. I want to go on a super secret spy mission. Izuku chuckled at that. It's not a super secret spy mission, Kenta. Well what is that job? Asked Genta. We're sneaking into Endeavor's house. Benta's smile instantly disappeared as he instantly turned pale before squeaking out a what? 
Chapter 13, Fireside Study This is crazy, said Benta as he started putting his stuff in the van. I mean this is just nuts. Izuku came down the stairs and put his back in the back of the van. Benta calmed down. We're just going over to Endeavors for a study session. We might not even run into him. Might being the keyword here, said Benta. Why are we even trying this? I mean can't you just shrink down and sneak into his house? Why are we going full size, taking a risk running into the guy who wants to throw us in prison? We need to do this so we can make some rich friends that can help legitimize us, so we can do something with this place and sell something. Endeavor is a risk we are going to have to take if we want to make everything we're doing legal, Ant-Man and Ant Hill stuff included. I know but it's still nuts. Standing not too far away from the van were Kenta and Genta watching Benta's freak out. Hey how much you want to bet that Benta's going to blow it somehow, said Kenta. I'll take those odds, said Genta as he took out a few bills. I'm sure our boy will come through, I put 5,000 yen he'll come out cool as a cucumber. I'll take those odds, said Kenta as he matched the money on the table. I doubt they get arrested but I'm sure something will happen. Gee thanks for the vote of confidence guys, said Hannah as she walked to the van with her sister right behind her. For that, you two are cleaning the gym while we're gone, said Sarah. Kenta and Genta looked at each other for a moment before shrugging. Unbeknownst to them both Benta and Izuku heard them talking. Oh man, why did Kenta have to say that? I don't know if I can do this, I'm used to being the guy in the chair not the guy in the field. Hey the field is just a study session with people our age, it will be a cakewalk. Not to mention you will have a computer in front of you when you're studying, because. Benta sighed, because I'm the one with online homework. Exactly, which doesn't even make sense since I never even finished high school. True, but you're smart enough and tech suave enough to pull it off, said Izuku but he could see his words weren't exactly comforting him. Look Benna just relax, chill man, everything will be alright okay, just stay calm, maybe crack a joke or two and everything will be alright, okay. Benta was silent for a moment, okay. Don't worry everything will be fine. I'm more personally worried about the other two that are coming. You mean your old friend, asked Hannah. Back you go, right. Yeah come on let's go pick him up, said Izuku as he signaled Benta to get into the drivers. As they were going onto public roads Izuku couldn't drive, even though he knew how, but Benta was old enough to drive and had a real enough fake driver's licenses to work with. Come on time to roll out. Oh, about time you got here, yelled Bakugo who was waiting in front of the ramen shop waiting for them. What the hell took you so long? Those who didn't know him just gave him a deadpan stare for a moment, so this is Bakugo, said Sarah. Yep, said Izuku as he leaned his head out of the van and saw his mom and Mitsuki in the ramen shop looking at them giving them a wave. Okay, time to get moving, Bakugo you can get shotgun. As Izuku moved to the back to sit in between Hannah and Sarah. Good, said Katsuki as he sat in the shotgun seat, who are these extras? Benta looked at Bakugo, extras. Izuku quickly put his hands on the sister's shoulders to calm them down as he chose to ignore this to move things along. The driver is Benta, a senior in high school. He then gestured to the sisters, this is Sarah and Hannah he. They're also in high school, they're also coming to the study sessions as well, so behave. TCH, why should I? retorted Katsuki. I shouldn't even be here, I can study fine just on my own. Then why are you here? asked Hannah. My hag wanted me to come, so I could watch Deku, said Katsuki as he kept his eyes forward. Deku, repeated the sisters, before they quickly realized they were talking about Izuku. Izuku snaked his hands into their stopping them and causing them to blush slightly. Benta, I think we should head off. Right, as Benta started to drive to the other side of town. Izuku for a moment thought he should keep his mouth quiet but thought it would be best to ask, So Bakugo, how's your recovery going? Bakugo tilted his head back for a moment stopping himself from blurting out some insult. Fine, I don't need a crutch anymore and my body is pretty much healed, I should be able to take the UA exam here soon. Good then you'll be happy to know there are going to be some UA students at the study group tonight, said Izuku. Bakugo then turned around to look at Izuku in the eye, or trying his best to in the low light. You serious? Yep, also some of the other students are kind of rich. I don't know if they have a stick up their ass but I suggest keeping the voice low. Bakugo turned back, great a bunch of rich brats. Bakugo was silent for a moment before deciding to speak. Deku, if this happens again, tell me first and not my mom. Izuku raised an eyebrow, not my fault she was on the phone with my mom when I told her about the study group. She's been calling my mom every day since the last time I saw you, is she still trying to get us to move in with you guys? Izuku felt the girl's hands tighten for a moment before quickly relaxing. Yeah about that, my mom has been looking into apartments for you too, even been looking around your new college. Izuku groaned, great, just great. The trip was mostly silent after that with only the radio being the only thing playing. Benta kept his eyes on the road, Katsuki kept his eyes on his phone as he wanted to avoid conversation as much as possible. In the back, Izuku felt his girlfriends leaning on him as he held their hands. I should really take them both on a proper date, maybe to a movie. As Izuku made plans to take some time off for his girls. Yo, Izuku I think we're here, said Benta as he slowed down the car. Izuku leaned forward and saw the massive house in front of them. Yep that's the house in the photo Natsu sent, that's Endeavor's house. Endeavor, yelled Bakugo. When the fuck did you say anything about Endeavor? Oh right I guess I didn't tell you about that, the one I'm helping today is Endeavor's son, so behave. Said Izuku before he noticed another car parked outside. 
Oh, there's Ochako. Before they all got out of the van and he waved at the car. The car's passenger door opened as Ochako stepped out. Hey Izuku, waved Ochako. He, why Ochako? Waved back Izuku greeting the girl as he did the car driver's side door opened as a grown woman stepped out that looked like an older version of Ochako. Oh, you must be Mrs. Uraka, a pleasure to meet you. As he gave her a proper bow. Pleasure to meet you as well, replied Mrs. Uraka, returning the bow. So this must be the Izuku my daughter has been talking about. I thought he might just be a smart kid but if he's connected to whoever owns this house then he might have some potential. And Mrs. Uraka cleared her throat. So Izuku are you really going to be tutoring several kids today? Oh yeah, I've done it before, three of the four I came with I have tutored before, so a few more shouldn't be that was when Izuku turned around and noticed something. The problem, oh no, thought Izuku as he saw Achako staring at Hannah and Sarah with them looking back. What the hell is up with the chicks? Asked Katsuki. How the fuck should I know? Said Benta. Achako looked between the two slightly nervous. Are they twins? They both look beautiful, with great hair and better bodies than me, but they're high schoolers, they should have boys their own age right. Hannah and Sarah both quickly glanced at each other after looking at Archako, as they both had the same thought. She's too innocent. As they felt somewhat pity for the girl as they noticed several details. New clothes, a new haircut, all to impress her crush. She has no idea that her crush has lived a life she couldn't possibly understand. Izuku looked between them, I should do something right. I've seen this before, even on jobs before but I've never been in this scenario, what should I say? Hey, said Natsu as he waved to the group, getting their attention. Hey, Natsu, said Izuku as he waved back. Is this your study group? Asked Natsu. Yeah, this is. Bakugo cut Izuku off and stepped between them. Are you really Endeavor's brat? Izuku quickly grabbed Katsuki's ear and pulled him aside. Sorry about him, he kind of the problem child of the group. As Izuku ignored the insults coming from Katsuki's mouth. Oh, it's fine, senpai. Said Natsu before turning to Katsuki. And yeah, Endeavor is my dad. Senpai. Thought everyone as they heard it from Natsu's mouth. You don't need to call me that. Said Izuku but couldn't help but feel a little bashfulness at someone older than him calling him senpai. Well you are already a university student, while the rest of us are in high school, said Natsu before noticing Katsuki and Achako. Or in middle school. This kid is really a college kid. Though Mrs. Uraka. Maybe Achako has picked a winner. Have fun, waved Mrs. Uraka to her daughter as she told her she would pick her up in a few hours. Anyway, we should probably head inside, the others are inside already correct. Asked Izuku. Yeah the rest are inside, said Natsu as he ushered them inside. Oh, Natsu brought them to a big room that was clearly a dining room to eat meals on a long traditional short table with several high school students seating around it drinking tea. Everyone allow me to introduce Izuku Midoriya, the kid with the big brain that just got into college. The rest of the high schoolers were slightly awed by that fact. Are you really a college student? Yes I am, I got confirmation the other day, said Izuku holding up his phone showing that email saying he passed the test. And you are. Oh where are my manners, said a lanky blonde who judging by his clothes as he wore nothing but named brand material, was filthy rich. My name is Toto Yen at your serves. Yen, as in the largest bank in the country and in Southeast Asia, Yen, said Izuku as he then recognized the boy. Oh, this is the idiot from the Christmas party. Toto looked down slightly, yes, that's the one. You okay? Yes, it's just lately I don't feel up to the Yen name. Well what do you expect, said a boy sitting next to him with scales running along with his hands and face, with fangs poking out of his mouth, the guy was partially mugged inside his own house. Actually Gator, it was at my grandfather's house but still, I had everything taken from, I was knocked unconscious and stripped down to my undershirt, it was utterly humiliating, said Toto with slight tears coming out of his eyes. Hey calm down, it's not your fault your grandfather's Christmas party was attacked, said a girl with short red hair trying to comfort the boy, before turning to Izuku. Hi, I'm Uheya, a second year at UA High. Yue hi, said Ochako and Katsuki as they saw a girl who might one day be their senpai. Oh did someone mention our school? They all turned to see a girl with blue spiral hair coming down the hall with two other girls behind her. Hi I'm Nejair Hado. Natsuo, your sister just got showing us your house. This place is big. Oh are you guys the ones we're studying with? She then noticed Izuku. Oh are you the really smart brain boy? Izuku opened his mouth for just a second. Oh, I'm. She then moved in front of the sisters. Oh wow, are you two twins? Your hair is amazing. Do you both have like twin quirks or can you read each other's minds? The sisters blinked. Hua, Nejire then moved to Bekugo. Wow your hair is so spiky do you have a porcupine quirk? Katsuki's face suddenly filled with tick marks. What? Nejire then moved on to Achako. Oh hi there, you are just adorable. Oh gosh I just want to know everything about all of you. Achako blushed, why wow, you are really bubbly. You must be the one with the writing problems, said Izuku. Nejire turned back to Izuku. Oh wow, how did you know? Lucky guess. Yeah, it's true. According to present Mike Sensei I have a new butterfly problem, explained Nejire before she noticed Benta. Who? Who are you? Oh uh, hi, I'm Benta, he said slightly nervous. Hi, I'm Nejire. I'm pretty sure they all know that by now, said a young woman with large furry ears who was slightly older than Nejire as she pulled the blue-haired girl back. Sorry about my former kuai, she can be quite a lot to handle. Natsua waved it off, it's all good, Banny. 
even though she wasn't talking to him. Judging by that goofy grin, this must the girl he likes. Izuku stepped forward and put his bag down on the table. It's all right, but we should be moving this along. He then turned to the group he brought. This is Benta, Hannah, Sarah, Katsuki, and Achako. The latter two are trying to get into UA. Oh wow, new first years, said Nejaira as she went back to the two to Katsuki's annoyance. It feels like it was just a year ago I was the first year. That's because we were first years a year ago, pointed out Yuyu. What's with all the noise? They all turned to see a boy around Izuku's age that had white and red hair and a scar on his face looking at them. Oh hey Shoto, said Natsuo surprised to see his brother. Ah, uh, this is the study group I mentioned that would be coming by. Shoto looked at the group. Oh, I see. Izuku could tell there was some sort of tension between the family, maybe something he could use. You want to join us? Shoto looked at Izuku. What? Izuku locked his fingers together before stretching them. What subject are you struggling with? Shoto raised his eyebrows. I'm not struggling at all. Dot, dot, dot. Wait, are you the tutor? You bet. Class is about to begin, so I suggest you grab your books, said Izuku. He took out a notebook and looked over the students in front of him. Gator, right. What subject are you struggling with? Gator was caught off guard being put on the spot. Ah, uh, chemistry, none of it makes sense to me. You're a racing fan, right? This surprised the boy. You're wearing a racing watch and your shirt has Formula One on it. Write down a series of racers and their vehicles. We'll match them up to chemicals. If you can remember a racer, then you can remember a chemical. Ah, uh, okay, said Gator as he got to work. Izuku moved to the next one. Yen, what you got? A uh, history, sir, said the boy as he fumbled to get his world history book out. I know Japanese history but world history is messing with me. Association, said Izuku. Compare what was happening at the time in Japan with the rest of the world. That might help you if think of the trade routes that might help with your family's background in business. You're on the Industrial Revolution, study the chapter and I'll quiz you later. Wow, said Nejaira as she got close to Izuku. You're moving quick. According to the brief description, Natsuo gave me you have a paper on early days of heroics due in two days. Nejair brought out her paper, yeah unfortunately I had to start over when my friend Mirio pointed out I went off topic way too many times. I'm writing it on paper first before I type it out. Did you know that the clothing industry had some major hurdles during the dawn of quirks? They coo. I'll stop right there, said Izuku cutting her off as he put a hand up in the air. Yes, as he moved his hand right, no, as he moved his hand left. Yes, no, yes, no, he said as he moved his hand back and forth. Nejair quickly began following his hand with her whole body as she muttered yes and no back at Izuku. Good, now apply that to your paper, said Izuku as he handed the paper back while keeping up with his hand movement. Just keep those two words in mind as you write. Nejair then started writing her paper down. Yuyu and Bani looked over Nejair's shoulder and noticed she was staying on topic. How the hell? asked Yuyu amazed. What is this sorcery? asked Bani. I've been trying to tutor this girl for years. How? Oh we are just getting started, said Izuku. We still have over two hours and I plan on cramming as much knowledge into your brains as possible within that time. Though, Fayumi couldn't help but be impressed by Izuku. She had been watching from not too far away as Izuku began to tutor the others. He kept them all focused while also giving them plenty of room to breathe. Even her brother Shoto had decided to come and get some advice on some homework he was working on. From one teacher to another, she was incredibly impressed that she started taking notes on Izuku's tutoring. He must have one incredible brain quirk to be able to juggle so many different topics all at once. The only ones he hasn't really been focusing too much on are Shoto, the loud boy, and the guy on his computer who looks like he's working on some sort of online assignment. As she watched him move from one student to the next, she noticed he flipped between pages on a notebook. That must be his notes on each subject. I wonder how he has them organized. As if reading her mind, Izuku looked over at Fayumi. You got a question? Uh, oh no, I'm sorry, just ignore me. Don't let me distract you, said Fayumi trying to wave it off. Kind of hard, since I see you staring at me from the doorway. Explained Izuku confirming that he noticed her, you have a question right. Fayumi was caught off guard a bit. I well, uh, I'm sorry I'm an elementary school teacher and I'm just curious how you're able to move between everyone so well. Izuku thought about it for a moment. Practice mainly, prepping a cheat sheet also helps. As Izuku pointed down at Yuyu's paper, double check that and show your work please. Cheat sheet, asked Fayumi. Here, as Izuku handed over his notebook for a second before looking down at Natsuo, not bad, you got all the letters correct, just don't forget the commas. Fayumi looked at the notebook, each page was dedicated to each person, with a brief description of their personality and interest along with what subject they need help in. How did you get all this? Natsuo, as Izuku inspected Toto's work. Good job but make sure you spell the countries correctly. As he pointed to the textbook, I learned the best way to teach someone is to know them, so I just asked your brother for some basic info to help me out. If you know your students then you can communicate with them better. When you get right down to it that's what teaching is. Communicating knowledge in a way someone can understand it and remember it. Fayumi could only stare in amazement at Izuku. Wow, how long have you been tutoring to come up with this? Izuku thought it over for a moment. I've been tutoring for a long time it was my first real job to earn some extra money. As Izuku thought back where he tutored some kids back at the ramen shop, which is what Turk wanted. Why do you want me to tutor the other kids? Who are they? 
You're a smart kid, Izuku. I thought you wanted a job that wasn't dangerous that could give you a lot of money, said Turk as they talked back at one of the Turk's hideouts. You're right, I am smart. Those kids I've been helping, they may have been born in the trash pit, but they're different, confident, ridding their parents, it's them you're after. Turk laughed. Ding ding ding, you are correct my young friend, their parents all have connections with the gangs and other higher figures in the trash pit. Izuku thought it over, I haven't even met some of the parents, I'm a distraction. You've just been using me to make opportunities for you to spy on them. You are smart, don't worry nothing changed, just keep doing what you're doing and don't act suspicious. Izuku kept glaring at him. Hell looks on the bright side, you've been helping dumbasses, get a chance at school, ain't that something. I want a pay raise, said Izuku firmly. The Turk frowned, Izuku, you're smart, so you should know that all you're doing is being the distraction. That's your place and you get paid accordingly, you ain't the one get the information I need. Izuku thought for a moment, then what information do you need? The Turk was surprised for a moment before smiling. I knew I liked you. That was how Izuku got his first job to truly spy on someone. Izuku, are you okay? Asked Natsuo. Izuku quickly noticed everyone was looking at him. Oh, I'm fine, just lost in thought. Now where was I as Izuku grabbed his cup of tea only to find it empty. Oh, I guess I'm out of tea. Oh here, I can get you some more, said Fayumi as she handed the notebook back. You all can keep studying. Hey sis, how about just bringing the pitcher out, we can refill them ourselves, suggested Natsuo. Okay, just don't spill on your homework. Gator twitched at that comment and looked at his homework. Just on the safe side, do any of you guys have a drying quirk? This made a few of them chuckle. Just drink as if you're a dinner party, suggested Toto as he drank from his cup with his pinky extended outwards. That works for me. Okay come on we still got work to do, said Izuku as Fayumi brought the pitcher to him. Thank you. Before Fayumi could respond a booming voice cut through the house. F-U-Y-U-M-I. Why is the entryway filled with shoes? Who is they all turned as the number two hero walked into the room followed by three of his sidekicks. Endeavor looked at the group. Oh right, the study group, said Endeavor as he remembered what Natsuo had said. Benta went pale as he felt a lump in his throat, Endeavor. Hey dad, what are you doing in here? Asked Fayumi slightly nervous. Izuku quickly looked at Natsuo and Shoto and noticed that both of them were looking down and not looking at their father in the eye. I see Endeavor is having family troubles, huh? Wow, it's really him the number two hero, said Achako under her breath as she looked at the pro hero in awe. Endeavor heard this and quickly raised his hand. Don't get up, I don't have time for an autograph, I just came by quickly to grab something from my office. Uh, sir what are you getting? Asked Kaido. You kind of just rushed here suddenly. I remembered an old classmate of mine, may have a quirk that can help us in tracking down Ant-Man, said Endeavor. Izuku instantly gave Benta a look that said calm down and don't freak out. He quickly glanced at Hannah and Sarah and they kept their cool but Izuku could tell they were sweating a little. You three stay here, while I go grab my old contact list. Yes sir, said Bernan as she saluted her boss as he walked away, towards his office. Bernan looked at the group. Ah, so you guys are doing an old-fashioned study session, huh? Wow, some of you look young. Nice job, Natsuo. Way to lend a helping hand to your juniors. Natsuo scratched the back of his head. Uh, I'm not the one running this session. Really? Then who is? Everyone in the group besides Bakugo pointed to Izuku who gave her a peace sign. What? Is this kid even in junior high? Asked Onima. Izuku got a tick mark for that comment but quickly brushed it off. No, I'm not in junior high. My name is Izuku Midoriya and I'm in college. This fact just shocked the sidekicks. It's true, said Natsuo. He's our senpai. Speak for yourself, said Bakugo. Yeah, he's super smart and big-brained, commented Nejire. It's true, said Gator. He might be young but he's defiantly smarter than us. Oh really, has Bernan thought of some questions? Okay, smarty pants, what is 12x12? 144, said Izuku quickly as he poured himself some tea. That was too easy burning. Anyone who knows their timetables could have figured that one out. Said Kaido who thought of one, what is 38x64? 2432, said Izuku quickly before taking a sip of tea, non-colant, which just surprised the group even more. Forget math, said Onima as he thought of a question. What is dot 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 the chemical formula for coffee? 8 carbon molecules, 10 hydrogen molecules, 4 nitrogen molecules, and 2 molecules of oxygen, Izuku said without blinking, while everyone just looked at him wide-eyed, even Katsuki was shocked. Kaido turned to Anima, is that correct? Anima slowly nodded. According to my coffee mug, it is. It is, commented Izuku. I think I'm out of questions. Same, said Kaido giving up. Vernon however wanted one last try. Name all the Greek gods. Izuku raised an eyebrow. There's way too many of them to list so I'm just going to list the main ones. Zeus, Hera, Poseidon, Athena, Ares, Hermes, Artemis, Apollo, Hephaestus, Demeter, Aphrodite, Dionysius, Hades, and Hestia. Ah, you forgot about Neptune, shouted Vernon, thinking she had won. Fayumi raised her hand getting the fire girl's attention. Vernon, Neptune is a Roman god, not Greek. Vernon blushed. I knew that. I was dot 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 just trying to test you guys. Enough Vernon, said Endeavor as he walked into the room. You're trying to match wits with someone who clearly has intelligence quirk. Endeavor then looked directly at Izuku. This boy. I don't know why but I don't like him. My gut is telling me something is off about this one. Endeavor narrowed his eyes. So you're the university brat that is here to help my son. 
Izuku kept his face neutral under Endeavor's gaze. He could tell Endeavor was sizing him up. That's what I'm here for, don't believe me, you can ask the table. Endeavor then looked at the other kids and noticed a clear difference between the table. What schools do you kids go to? Raz, are you middle school, sir? Answered Achako with a cheery smile. Alder a middle school, said Katsuki as he noticed the look Endeavor was giving them. What the hell is with the look? It's because we're brats from the street, said Sarah as she and her sister gave a look back at Endeavor. We might not be from some fancy academy like some of the others here but that doesn't mean we bite. So can you stop giving us the stink eye, finished Hannah, we're from St. Grace. Endeavor's glare didn't fade in the slightest under their remarks, it was making a few people in the room nervous, Vernon stepped forward. Look ladies your school has nothing to do with this, so I suggest you show some respect. Both sisters kept quiet but it was clear that they didn't respect Endeavor. In fact, they downright hated him for trying to arrest Izuku but right now they knew it was better to keep a lid on it at the moment. Endeavor then scanned the table when his eyes settled on the one that looked uncharacteristically nervous and out of place. You, as he pointed at Benta, is this brat really here to teach my son? Benta started sweating as a million thoughts ran through his head. His eyes darted all over the room as his eyes landed on the sisters that told him not to say anything, then on Katsuki, for some reason. They gave him a face of what the fuck do you want from me? Achako looked slightly confused and Izuku just gave him a look that said remain calm. Then Benta remembered what Izuku had said earlier. No, he's dot 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 here dot 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 to date your daughter. The moment the words left Benta's mouth the room became utterly silent as the boy just thought he fucked up as Izuku just gave him a shocked look. As Gator, Toto, and Katsuki started to bust up laughing, even Endeavor's sidekick started giggling a little as they all took it as a joke. Fayumi on the other hand turned bright red, huh, wait what? She's turning red, pointed out Nejire while she laughed. Nejire don't, said Yuyu as she herself tried not to laugh. Achaka was blushing slightly, oh it was a joke, as she gave a small smile. The sisters blushed as well, but some of it was out of jealousy and a bit of annoyance. Idiot. Then muttered under their breath. Endeavor just sighed, dumb brats. He muttered. Wait are you really dating my sister? Asked Shoto with a neutral expression. Izuku looked at the boy for a moment to see if he was just trying to add to the joke but no, Shoto looked serious. Seriously. Endeavor's eyes snapped open. Well might as well roll with it. Thought Izuku. Yes, Shoto, I am dating your sister who I just met for the first time today, said Izuku voice dripping with sarcasm. Oh, said Shoto before giving a small bow. Welcome to the family. The room went silent again as all eyes turned to Shoto. He can't honestly believe that Kenny. Thought everyone. Even Fayumi and Natsuo were shocked but slowly depressed as they realized their little brother was being completely serious. Izuku almost couldn't believe it. What the hell is up with this kid? Only a moron would believe something like that. Is he really that socially inept? Thought Izuku before collecting himself. Shoto. You don't honestly Izuku stopped as he looked and saw Endeavor standing right behind him. Endeavor. Endeavor without warning reached down and grabbed Izuku by his hoodie and raised him off the ground to the large man's eye level. His actions caused the room to go on alert as everyone started freaking out. Dad stop, yelled Fayumi as she grabbed her father's arm. It was a joke. Yeah, Dad stop, he's just a kid, begged Natsuo as he tried to step in front of Endeavor. Then he even tried to grab Endeavor's leg, I'm sorry, I was just trying to be the funny guy for once. Boss, don't fry the kid, said Bernan. Yeah, your daughter's an adult, you should trust her decisions, said Anima. What the fuck, said Kaido to his friend. Are you okay with this? What no, I was trying to say trust Fayumi, to not date someone over 10 years younger than her. Over 10's years, how old do they think I am? Thought Fayumi for a second. Dad, please drop him. What the fuck is wrong with this guy? Thought Izuku as he carefully controlled his ants as he had them just outside the room, including a shrinking disc in his hand. Izuku had yet to use ether as he waited for Endeavor's next move but he hadn't, which irritated Izuku as he had to force himself not to react. What the fuck is he doing? Seriously, was all Endeavor said for Izuku to realize his mistake. Fook me, that's what I said after the damn armadillo guy freaked out, and I repeated myself just now in front of him, if I go down I'm kicking that armadillo's ass. Thought Izuku as he tried his best to keep his face neutral. Luckily a new face got between them. Hey, can you please put Midoriya down? Asked Nejire who was upside down. Izuku blinked as he realized she was floating upside down and literally stuck her head between them, now that's an interesting quirk. Thought Izuku before he felt Endeavor suddenly let him go and gravity grabbing him. Izuku was more focused on Nejire's quirk he didn't have time to catch himself so he crashed on the table causing the picture of Tifayumi brought to splash all over him. Sorry, was all Endeavor said as he looked at Izuku, this boy. Could he be Ant-Man? No, maybe, my gut is telling me he's something that I should be concerned about, I'll watch him for now. Benta and Fayumi helped Izuku to sit up while Achako offered him her handkerchief. Thanks. Izuku quickly used the cloth to wipe the tea off his face before glaring back up at Endeavor. A challenge. Endeavor smiled. Good eyes, boy. Before turning around and walking away, Natsuo, keep an eye on him. Huh. As Natsuo was perplexed by his dad's actions. Why? And don't let him into Fayumi's room. Endeavor shouted back. Everyone blinked for a moment as they processed what happened. I think he likes you, said Shoto getting all their attention. 
What? said Izuku. Why? Shoto looked at the stunned sidekicks. Isn't that what dad said to you guys when he hired you guys? He said he liked the look of your eyes. Kaido and Anima looked at each other for a moment while Burnin stared off into space for a second as they all realized. Yes, that's exactly what he said. Wait, he's serious. Shouted Fayumi as she looked Burnin. Burnin looked at her before looking at Izuku then at Natsuo. We should. We should catch up to Endeavor. As Burnin turned and ran down the hall. Best of luck, kid, said Anima. See you later, said Kaido as they followed Burnin. Wait, tell him I'm not dating anyone, tell him I'm not dating. He yelled Fayumi as they left. Izuku turned to Benta, who after seeing Izuku glare got on his hands and knees and bowed. I'm sorry, I just saw the tensions were rising and everyone was glaring and suddenly Endeavor was looking at me and I had no idea what to say and I thought I should calm things down with a joke, but Brain didn't think when joke was made. You look confused and asked, why are you talking like that? It is that when he's flustered or panicked, explained Izuku. Well I thought it was hilarious, four eyes, said Katsuki as he patted Bent on the bag, it will be years before Izuku bags a girl and I was able to get a pic of Endeavor holding him Darth Vader style. They earned several looks from around the room. Darth Vader style. What is Darth Vader? Asked Toto. How do you not know what Darth Vader is? Asked Nejire. I thought everyone has seen Star Wars. We can fix that later, said Izuku as he handed Achako back her handkerchief. Can I please get like a towel or something? Fayumi then remembered that the pitcher of tea was poured across the table and Izuku was still soaked in tea. Oh my, yes, I am so sorry, I'll be right back. As she ran to get a towel. Natsuo then grabbed some napkins and passed them to Shoto as they cleaned up the tea, luckily none of the homework got ruined. I am so sorry about this, Izuku, said Natsuo as he helped clean up the table. I didn't think my dad would actually jump the gun like that. He didn't, thought Izuku as he checked his hoodie, it's fine, I guess he was just being a dad. The brothers stopped for a second at that comment before Natsuo started whipping down the table again, this didn't go unnoticed by Izuku who took off his hoodie, man even my shirt got soaked. Anyway, I just got a little wet, no harm no foul. Ah, uh, Izuku. As Sarah got his attention. What? Izuku then noticed that Hannah had taken her phone out and taken a picture. Why did you just take a picture? He then noticed everyone else was looking at him and Katsuki's eye was twitching and Achako was turning bright red. Achako, are you okay? Hi. Izuku. Um, you're um. You are jacked, said Nejair as she invaded his personal bubble. Oh wow, you're like a mini Mirio, just more green. Who? Asked Izuku before Nejair started poking Izuku. Hey, what are you doing? You, you, Banny, come feel this he is rock solid, said Nejire with the same innocence as a child which made Banny face bomb. Nejire, yelled Yuyu as she went over and reached around Izuku and grabbed Nejire's hands, you can't start poking people without their permission. It was at that moment that Fayumi decided to walk right back into the room. Alright I have the toe Fayumi stopped as she saw the sight of Izuku in a wet shirt, in between two high school girls that were holding hands around him. What? How old is he? As her face turned red. Izuku could feel two sets of eyes bore into the back of his head. Izuku didn't need to turn around to tell that his girlfriends weren't happy and that just made him feel worse. Izuku quickly reached forward and took the towel. Okay I didn't want to take a break this long but let's add another five minutes onto it. As Izuku started walking down the hall. I'm just going to go clean myself up. Oh. Night I sat in his office as he went over his notes. Tracking Ant-Man is nearly impossible inside the trash pit. None of the traffic cams work and almost nobody is willing to talk to us. Well look on the bright side, sir, said his intern Mirio. Now that proper heroes have gone into the trash pit, more people are coming forth more and more about criminals instead of being quiet. I guess that is a good thing, said Nighteye before the office phone started ringing. Mirio, could you get that? Mirio picked up the phone. Hello, thank you for calling the Nighteye agency. My name is Mirio. How can I help you today? Mirio had to quickly pull the phone away from his ear as he heard yelling. Uh, sir, Endeavor wants to talk to you. Night I was a bit surprised as he didn't expect Endeavor of all people to call him, put him on speaker. Mirio hit the button. Hello, Endeavor, why are you calling me? We need to talk Night I said Endeavor over the phone. And what is it that you wanted to discuss with me? How tall is Ant-Man? Night I raised an eyebrow as he wasn't expecting the question. For a moment he questioned if he was really talking to Endeavor. Mirio, grab and read off the official information given to us by the police. All right, said Mirio as he quickly grabbed the Ant-Man file which was easy as the file hadn't been put away for weeks. According to the police file dot 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 his height's not reported. According to the file, height was not recorded due to his quirk changing size. What? Since he has a quirk that changes his size, recording it is pointless cause his quirk has proven to change to a variety of sizes usually that are smaller than what he is. But it means they couldn't accurately figure out his base height, explained Night Eye. They haven't but you have, said Endeavor. Even though you have refused to work with my agency, I know you have also kept looking into the identity of Ant-Man. You've been keeping track of all his movements, how tall is he usually? Night I thought it over for a moment. Endeavor wouldn't ask this unless he had some sort of idea who Ant-Man might be or at least a way to narrow down the list. I estimate his height to be around 170 centimeters. 170 centimeters you say? Then are we sure we are talking about an Ant-Man? Said Endeavor emphasizing the man part of Ant-Man. This made Night I think for a moment, but left Mirio confused. 
who I've only heard his voice via recordings but his voice sounds like a guy and the way he speaks doesn't sound very feminine, said Mirio giving his two cents. No, Mirio, that isn't what he's saying, are you, Endeavor? You're implying that Ant-Man isn't an adult but a teenager, said Nighteye as he thought over the information. Yes, we always figured he was young but we never thought to look at the teenagers in the trash pit. With how to matriculate the villains controlling the trash pit were, none of the adults were willing to risk anything to let people know about it. But a dumb brat on the other hand, said Endeavor, would be far more reckless. Finished Night Eye as he had to agree with Endeavor's idea but that left one question. Where did you come up with this idea? St. Grace Academy, said Endeavor. Have you ever heard of it? Night Eye was frozen for a second before he grabbed his laptop and furiously started typing. Mirio was confused, St. Grace. That doesn't sound like a hero school and since when does Japan has a Christian religious school? Night I stopped and turned the laptop around showing a picture of an old beat-up school building. Since the trash pit, St. Grace Academy the only school in the entire area. It was one of the locations we looked at as a staging ground to take back the town but the chief of police decided to use the police station as he wanted to turn it back into a symbol of order. There is no website or real record of it existing anywhere outside. We only really know it exists because of the kids informing us of it and providing its location. So that's why it sounded familiar, must have read it in the police report. Has anyone gone there yet? Asked Endeavor. Night I checked his computer for a moment as he searched the records that the police had provided. No dot 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 and no one has gone there or made contact with any teacher. I guess they all have been too focused on the criminals and gangs to check up on the school, said Mirio. Maybe or maybe this has something to do with the nuns, said Night Eye. You mean the ones Hawk's sidekicks mentioned, said Endeavor. While he was angry that Hawks let Ant-Man get away, he still made sure that information was properly shared between agencies. That would make sense if the nuns ran some sort of school called St. Grace. With this information now, I assume you are going to the school. I and All Might will be accompanying you, stated Night Eye clearly a fact and not a request. Endeavor was silent for a moment as he thought it over. He hated the idea of working with All Might but he did like the idea of having Night Eye owing him. Fine, I'll wait for you but you and All Might better be there in the morning. We'll be there. Just don't jump the gun, Endeavor, said Night Eye as the line ended. Mirio, go and tell the others. We're heading out early tomorrow. I'll contact All Might. Yes, sir, said Mirio as he wondered what would a school in the trash pit was going to be like. Oh, Izuku found himself in the Todoroki's bathroom as he tried to quickly tried to dry out his shirt. Damn, this tea is just not coming out. As he tried to wring out the tea from his shirt he caught a glance of himself in the mirror and his own reflection surprised him. Wow, I really do have muscles. I mean I always was in good shape cause of my old job, but I guess when I became Ant-Man it kicked things into high gear. I look like I work out regularly and that could be a problem. How do I explain this? Izuku thought it over for a moment. Nope, I got nothing that can explain this. Maybe no one will ask about it, hopefully. While Izuku was thinking of a way to move on to a different topic, he heard a knock on the door. Hey Izuku, you doing all right? Came Natsuo's voice. I got an old hoodie you can wear. Izuku opened the door, really thanks. As he took the red and white hoodie. Natsuo then bowed. I'm so sorry about my dad. I didn't even think he was going to be here tonight. I can't believe he just picked you up like that. Izuku put on the hoodie. It's all right. I guess he was just being a dad when he heard his little princess was dating. Natsuo was silent at that comment. I'm going to take a guess here and say that your family has problems. Yeah was all Natsuo said. I won't pry, but you should really talk to your brother more, said Izuku causing Natsuo to look a little surprised. He actually believed for a moment that I was dating your sister and it was kind of clear the two of you haven't hanged out much. I think you should fix that, it might do you both some good. Natsuo thought it over for a moment, yeah, I'll try that. Good, said Izuku as he patted Natsuo on the arm. Hey Izuku. They both turned to see Benta walking towards them in a quick pace. Hey Natsuo, would you mind giving us a second so I can quickly talk to Izuku? Uh, sure, I'll meet you guys back in the dining room, said Natsuo as he assumed Benta just wanted to quickly apologize. But Izuku knew it had to be something, with how pale he looked. Benta, what's wrong? This, as he signaled for Izuku to quickly follow him around the corner down the hallway where he points at a picture. Take a look. Izuku looked at the picture, it's a family photo what's then Izuku saw it, the boy next to Natsuo. White hair, turquoise eyes, and he was about the same height when they first met. Holy shit. Yeah, that's him right, I would never forget those dead eyes, said Benta in a quiet voice. Yeah, that's Todoroki. Fuck I knew that name sounded familiar, said Izuku as he remembered the young boy with the white hair that was covered from head to toe in bandages. I knew this family was fucked but damn. Well what would we do now? Asked Benta. Izuku thought quickly with this new information. Do not say a word about this to anyone, you understand. I need to make a phone call. Go back and tell everyone I just got a call from my mom, and don't mention him, okay. Benta nodded. Okay. Oh and one other thing, has Bakugo mentioned or spoken about my quirk? Asked Izuku. Benta shook his head, no he hasn't brought it up, why does that mean something? Izuku groaned, yeah chances are he wants something, shit. I'll have to deal with that later. Okay, I guess that's something else we'll just have to add to the list, he said before quickly heading back the way they came. 
Izuku quickly looked around and made sure he was alone. He quickly took out his phone and dialed a number. The phone rang a few times. Hey, I need someone located. Yeah, yeah, I don't give a shit. Tell Turk I need him to locate Dabai for me. Yes, the Dabai who do you think I'm talking about? I don't care if he scares the shit out of you. Tell Turk I need him found. Talk to the nuns if you have to just find him dot dot dot. Yeah, this is big. And yes, I am serious. Just tell Turk this is needed and I have a good reason. We might have a way to get the heroes by the balls with this one. Yeah, I'm fucking serious. Just find Dabai. Izuku then quickly hung up the phone. Oh, Endeavor, you might be a pain in my ass, but you might be the emergency ticket we need. As Izuku was about to make his way back, he heard a small thud. Out of curiosity, Izuku walked down the hall a bit as it opened up to an outside garden where he saw Fayumi sitting on the edge of the floorboard with her head against a support beam. Part of Izuku told him to just walk away, but another part of him told him as a hero he should help. Then another part of him told him he was already screwing over this family anyway, which just made him feel guilty. The fact he might have already pissed off Sarah and Hannah just made him feel worse. Ah, screw it, he said as he approached Fayumi. Everything all right? He said getting her attention. I hope I didn't cause too many problems for you today. Fayumi quickly waved, huh? Oh no, you didn't do anything? I mean not really, I was. Fayumi sighed as she leaned her head back on the support beam. I overheard you talking to Natsuo. I heard you call me daddy's little princess. Ah, uh, sorry, I didn't. No, she said quickly cutting him off. It's not your fault, it's just my family has been through a lot. After my mom had to leave, he's been distant, I would go weeks without seeing him and there were times where I thought he would just forget about us. So when he picked me up like a rag doll and I mentioned him being a bit protective of you. Izuku trailed off as he knew he hit the nail on the head. Fayumi grumbled a little, I have never once thought he would do that. I've never brought a boy home and this was a joke and I'm sure some part of him knew that but he still grabbed you dot 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 and I don't know how I feel about that. Izuku paused for a moment a single thought went through his mind. Am I really about to defend the guy who is trying to throw me in jail? Izuku groaned. Look I'm not an expert when it comes to fathers. Mine ran out when I was five. So I don't exactly have a good track record with them dot 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 but your dad hasn't left you. He still comes home and clearly he is worried for you and he does remember what's going on in your guys lives. He remembered somewhat that Natsuo had a study group so that's something. As he tried to help but Fayumi didn't look convinced. Look I don't know how broken your family is. My brother is dead, said Fayumi. Ugh, my mother is in the hospital. All right, my brothers are so distant I have no idea what they're thinking. Okay she's breaking, thought Izuku as he bent down to her level. And to top it off my dad is never around and now he just acted like a father for the first time in years and I don't know how to process this. Izuku grabbed one of her hands before quickly raising his hand and giving her a hard painful high five. Ah, uh, what was that for? To bring you back to reality, said Izuku before sitting down next to her. Look your family is broken, but they're all here. I personally don't know how damaged it is but you still live with them. Those bridges have clearly not been totally destroyed yet. So right now I guess you just need to decide whether or not you want to cross those bridges or leave. Reconnect with your brothers, dad and mom or just move on, make your own family. Izuku then looked at her directly in the eye. Though all that is your choice, you're a big girl, you just need to find the strength to back up whatever you decide. Fayumi was speechless at Izuku's words. She heard each word and wasn't about to forget it but the words left her with one question. How old are you? Izuku raised an eyebrow. I thought you were my little brother's age but you sound so mature. Izuku chuckled, I've been getting that a lot lately, I guess I'm quite mature for 15 year old. Fayumi's eyes went wide. You're 15, he's only 5 years younger than me. When I saw his face I thought he was younger than Shoto not older, but dot 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 now that I look at him despite his face his eyes do give off a mature vibe. As she looked into his green. Ah, uh, Fayumi. Fayumi then realized she had been staring at his eyes for about a minute. I'm sorry I just got lost in thought is all. Understandable, you have a lot to think about in the meantime, I should be getting back to the others. Said Izuku as he stood up and reached into his pocket. Here, if you ever want a good bowl of ramen, look up Mr. Ramen's Ramen. It's a shop I work out of on occasions. If you need me you can find me there. Thanks, said Fayumi as she watched Izuku walk back to the others. You know he's almost an adult, maybe in a few years. I don't think like that Fayumi, that's bad, just bad. As she mentally scolded herself. Oh, tick tock, tick tock, went the clocks in the room. In the center of the room was Time Bomb with his eyes blindfolded, surrounded by the old-fashioned clocks, hearing them tick. For a while he waited until in a flash his hands moved around the clocks, stopping their timers. He then waited again for a few seconds before stopping more clocks until the ticking ceased. Time Bomb took off the blindfold and checked all the clocks. They were all stopped within a second of the one-minute mark. Not bad for being so rusty but I can do better. So this is some form of training. Time Bomb looked over to see Kama leaning against the doorway. I was wondering what you needed so many clocks for. I'm using them to help train my mental clock. My quirk allows me to turn everything I touch into a bomb with a timer. This is to help me accurately time my bombs so they set off when I want them to, explain Time Bomb. I see, said Kamo as she eyed Time Bomb. It looks like your wounds have healed up quickly. I know a good doctor, a bit pricey but worth it I should be fully healed by next week, said Time Bomb. Is there something you wanted to tell me? 
Yeah, two of my girls found something. Said Kamo as Kazuri and Julie walked in. This is Kazuri and Julie. They got something you might want to hear. Julie just shrugged. I'm not entirely sure we have something. To be honest, Kazuri just figured out a smell that was on Ant-Man. Time Bum raised an eyebrow. A smell. Ramen, said Kazuri. Every location Ant-Man was at had the smell of ramen. Time Bum saw where this was going, Mr. Ramen's ramen. Yeah, how did you Julie was cut off by Time Bomb? Because it's pretty much the only restaurant in the trash pit that was able to remain independent. Anyone that tried to screw Mr. Ramen would get the shit kicked out of them by Mr. Ramen himself. Many have tried, all have failed cause of that he's been popular with the locals and now that the secret of the trash pit is out his place has been booming. Which makes me guess you haven't been able to find Ant-Man. Explain Time Bomb while also making an educated guess. Kazuri growled a little at the end. Kazuri warned Kamo as she didn't want to deal with the other girl at the moment. Finish your explanation. Kazuri huffed. We stayed by the shop, too many people with strong scent of ramen. I see so you couldn't figure out who it was, but if I'm hearing you correctly you were able to get the scent of ramen off of Ant-Man from the locations he's been, said Time Bomb as he got an idea. Is your nose that strong? Kazuri was silent but Julie was more than happy to show off her friend. Oh yeah, Kazuri can smell what you ate last week, she puts bloodhounds to shame. Really? Perfect. As Time Bomb walked past them, grabbing his jacket on the way out, follow me. They followed Time Bomb down the hall to a small leaving room area where they saw Flame Elephant, Rad Volts, and the Shadow Man seating around a TV that was showing the local news. Rad Volts noticed them first. Please tell me, we're about to move. Close, said Time Bomb as he reached into his jacket taking out a match. Flame Elephant ignite this. Flame Elephant looked at him for a moment before doing as he was told and extended his elephant trunk out, igniting the tip of the tiny match. Smell this, Time Bomb ordered Kazuri. Now Kazuri wasn't the type of girl to just follow the orders given by Time Bomb but the second the match was in her direction, her nose was assaulted by what she could only describe as shit fire. As she immediately covered her nose and backed away from the flame. Get that shit away from me. Time Bomb smirked before blowing out the flame, how about now, can you still smell? Kazuri quickly nodded while keeping her nose covered, of course, I can still smell that shit. Good, then this will lead us to Ant-Man. Kamo found this idea interesting but left a question, how did you know that elephant's flame would smell? There was an American hero called Chamber, his mouth was constantly on fire, but the thing that people who knew him would constantly mention was that his flames would constantly smell and change depending on what he ate. That's when I learned the very fun fact that people with flame quirks that are produced from inside their bodies have the worst smelling flames. Flame Elephant got out of his seat. So does this mean I get my rematch with Ant-Man? Hold it, yelled Rad Volts as he stood up and glared at Flame Elephant. If anyone is going to kill him it's going to be me. This won't kill him and Flame Elephant isn't going along, said Time Bomb getting their attention. Ant-Man might be the first hero the trash pit has seen but he's still from the pit. When push comes to shove he'll run away and he has the perfect power set for that. To truly nail the bastard we need to know who the fuck he is and we're not going to do that by running at him. For this, to work we need someone who can use pyrokinesis. I see where you're going with this, said Kamo. And I got good news for you, I have just a girl for the job. Lily. The sound of high heel boots could be heard as a woman with bright red hair, wearing tight skinny combat pants, high heeled boots, and a tight Kamo crop top. You called boss, Lily spoke with a clear American southern accent. You girls sure love your Kamo, said Time Mom as he sized the woman up while the other men just stared at her chest. Some had the decency to try and hide it while Flame Elephant just kept staring. Time Bum allows me to introduce you to our hotshot, Lily otherwise known as the Phoenix, said Kamo as she put her arm around the girl. I dare you to find a better pyrokinesis user in this country or in all of Asia. Time Bum frowned slightly. That's a big claim, can your girl back it up? Oh, I can do more than that, sugar. As Lily raised her hand slightly and spun her finger, as she did a small stream of flame was pulled from Flame Elephant's trunk before the flames formed a ring that started spinning around the woman's finger. Just tell me who I have to burn. Time Bum smiled, I guess it's time we light a fire under the pit and smoke this bastard out. Thank you for joining us on this incredible journey through what if Deku started petty crimes. I hope you found it as intriguing and thought-provoking as we did. A big shout out to Lawrence Oj 10 for crafting such a compelling story. Don't forget to check out their profile on fanfiction.net for more amazing works, the link is in the description below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe to Quirky What If for more fascinating explorations into the world of fanfiction and fantasy. Your support helps us create more content like this, and we're always excited to hear your thoughts and suggestions in the comments section. See you guys in the next video.